Hey folks, good afternoon. Welcome to Sunday, hope you're doing well. Um, God knows what's happening with the football, but pff, that's another story. Um, yeah, so how you doing? Hope you're well. London Heathrow, folks. Bottom right hand side of your screen there, you will see that we are at the London Fire Brigade here at London Heathrow. Um, work in unison with these guys uh, on airside as well. Now that, um, that little QR code that you see down there um, takes you to a very special standby. Takes you to a page, uh, which is sort of like a home check. Um, Got to do it myself, to be honest with you. Although I am very uh, particular about smoke alarms and all that. One thing John did tell me, if you're living in the London area and you haven't got a fire alarm, they will come out there and fit one for you. F-O-C, free of charge. So uh, that's a really good thing that they're doing. Um, but anyway, let's get on with the show. Lots to do, lots to see. Uh, obviously this new location is sort of like, I would say halfway down maybe. Would you say that's right, Jilly? Maybe just under halfway down. Yeah, I don't know, it's two miles long this runway. Um, but oh, I don't know, we'll figure it out during the show. Um, but right opposite us, we've got Terminal 3, Terminal 2 over there, uh, the maintenance sheds over to my left, Terminal 5, a better shot of Terminal 5. All this stuff going on here with Delta and American and um, Cafe Pacific and even uh, Cat uh, um, Emirates part there, 380 over there, remember a couple of weeks ago. So we got clear shots across the airfield and um, thank you once again to all the folks. Greenwatch today, folks, Greenwatch. Um, so uh, yeah, here we go, let's get on with it. He walks nonchalantly back to his camera, zooms in on a Cafe Pacific 777. Now this is where you're going to get folks, ah, great banking shots as well. So we're obviously here for the switchover as well, but we're going to get start up. Um, Noises from the engines. Wind sort of carrying in this direction. There it is. Afternoon, everybody. Just gone one o'clock here in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom. Um, hope you're doing well, wherever you are in the world. Right, okay, let's get an approach and landing shot. First one. Of course, this big long roof that I'm on, it's uh, quite critical uh, finding the right position on the roof uh, to minimize the lampposts. Oh, number two start. There's the flare. You get more of an idea of speed here as well, don't you? I have a feeling. Got his nose out of joint, look. So we've discussed that um, nose cone or uh, ray dome also housing a couple of other antennae as well but um, seems to be the most favored exit for these jets that one right fares that was a deep dive in you know what fares i didn't want to say anything I'm not a pilot, I have no idea, but it did look like there was a bit of a sort of like negative attitude there, um, sort of like 75 feet, something like that, 100 feet. This is much more of a sort of like flared angle, 
um, attitude, should I say, nose slightly up, and then we'll hit the flare at around about 30 feet. Here it comes. Hardly noticeable a lot, of, a lot of time. Wow, that was quick down on the nose though, I have to say. Wow. Get that one going. Engine thrust reverses in action. 18 blades, um, titanium blades on the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000, uh, 22 blades on the old GE90. I say old GE90 because it really is. It's old technology, but these things, just like um, just like anything uh, these days in terms of firmware and uh, engine management systems, will always be updated so as to uh, more to do I'd imagine with fuel mixture um, but also all the time these airlines these airlines and engine manufacturers working to sort of like improve um, the efficiency of the aircraft so there'll be things that you don't even know uh, are happening are happening if you saw it. Yeah, when we get a bit of a lull, folks, we've got 380 after this one. So get sharing. Tell your friends. You'd be surprised. So many youngsters as well. more uh, exaggerated on the flare there. A little bit of um, rudder action before she touches the nose down. Smooth. Very smooth. You wait till this comes up in the, in the wet, folks. What we want is some serious rain so we can see these reverses in action. So the reason why you'll hear the um, the air coming outside of those engines is because um, even though there's no severe uh, heavy amount of thrust being applied um, the um, the blocker doors that are sort of like hidden from view you can't see them they're inside the sort of like uh, uh, I think they're all part of the um, core cowling system internally which blocks the airflow and directs it towards the fins here we go San Francisco. She knows, she knows, she needs no reverse. Huge amount of wheel braking, great big uh, wing spoilers, and she's almost at a stop for the exit. Probably auto brake that one. Still with this of the air being uh, thrown outside of the engine, almost like bleed air in a funny sort of way. But it's bleed air because it's a redirected airflow, isn't it? explaining what the flare um, is um, 
final part of the, uh, of the touchdown procedure. Uh, sometimes more noticeable than others. Depends on the pilot themselves as well, of course. And when you're, um, when you're training on an aircraft, uh, if you're going from, like, for instance, uh, type rating on the 787, you're type rated across the, uh, across the board in terms of flying it. But in terms of um, operating it on taxiways and also landings, because it's a longer fuselage, you kind of have to get used to that, um, that long fuselage in the, in the whole um, landing sequence uh, and also I'd imagine the takeoff as well because you don't want to drag the tail see she's quite nose down then up comes the flare there it is and then you sometimes get a little bit of a float Egypt Air Cargo well we've seen that a few times yeah 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 Cheers, Roger. Roger, under over out. Mark McCluskey is in the middle. Welcome, Mark. Hope you're doing well. Hope everybody's doing well. Maybe the first, uh, the first show for some folks. Um, who was it who, who, who um, gifted five memberships literally as we turned the, turned the lights out the other day, Jilly? Which was a great shame. Peter Graham, thank you, Peter, gifting five uh, memberships <laughs> as we literally sw switched the lights out uh, on the last show. So sorry, Peter, uh, giving you a shout out now. Was it Peter Graham or was it somebody else? Uh, okay, we've got two, have we? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. TCC, must be some proper headwind today. Ronald with wings, my apologies. Ronald and, and Peter as well and everybody else who gifted membership, but it was Ronald with wings. Thank you, Ronald. Up above the sky, up and above the clouds, the only way to fly is on the wings of love. The OG crew. We did it. We did have a big jet TV evolution T-shirt, didn't we? <laughs> you know, with 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 like, yeah, yes. You know. Yeah, nice. That's quite high-speed Saudi. Yeah. The old man flew for these guys back in 70, in the late 70s on their 747-100s. Or it might have been a 200, I don't know. I think it was the, think it was the 100, still the 100 at that stage. It's um, interesting being uh, sort of uh, looked at the uh, history of um, four engine jet travel it's a very interesting timeline um, it's incredible to think that the Concorde was originally conceived um, in 1954 like, 1954 and so much has happened uh, since the early days. 
Got it all written down. And the crazy thing is, that aeroplanes like the uh, A330 Oh, sorry, the A300. However, the A330 um, was the first one. First, um, of course, the A330 was a, uh, I'm just looking at it, not a four engine, uh, latter stage. Whoa, easy, son. Wow, big lurch there, man. Interesting thing that Airbus did with the A330. Nice, here we go. Only inboard reverses on the 380, folks. Probably uh, a few people wondering, oh, why, what, what, what's happened to the outboard engines? Why aren't they? Uh, uh, opened for reverse as well. Only the inboard engines uh, are required, really, on that big jet, purely because she has so much braking power on the wheels. Uh, Airbus originally, when they um, originally planned that aircraft, all the way back in 1980, when they uh, originally um, put pen to paper or um, pencil to drawing board um, of the 380. Interesting story behind that whole sort of like uh, era of, of air travel. But uh, originally when they, um, when the prototype rolled out of the, um, of the factory, which was quite some time later. It was a 26-year development program for the A380. Insane, isn't it? Insane, 26 years. Um, 777 was around about 10 years, I think. Maybe even less than that. I know that, um, you know, the 777 was, uh, oh, that sounds big going out there. Got a little bit of LAX sort of like about this position in a funny sort of way. What's the, um, but better, better views in terms of the, uh, the outbound, the climb out, climb out shots and, uh, well, approaches and basically everything. But there's my little bit of LAX right there. You'll know what I'm talking about. Very famous landmark at Los Angeles. That's actually a walk bridge to the parking lot. Uh, not quite so glamorous uh, as Los Angeles, but um, there you go. Oh, start up. Interesting uh, timeline. Of course, um, Airbus really do hold the um, hold the number one status on the first wide-bodied jetliner, didn't they? Is it the A300? Which I don't know. It's the 
Tristar it was 1972, wasn't it? What is amazing, folks, in doing my research? This is crazy. The Comet. Remember the Comet? Lots of you will be like, no. Nope. Uh, but lots of you will be like, yep. Flew on it, blah, blah, blah. Something I found staggering the other day, a factoid. Only seats for up to like 40 people. 44, 38, some, depends on the configuration. BEA, I think, originally introducing them. But that's crazy, isn't it? Oh, it's BOAC. It was BOAC originally. Yeah, it was a bit of BOAC, wasn't it? So they're the reverses on the CFM56 engine that you just saw closing up there. Hinge door type reverses. So at three o'clock this afternoon, um, we will have departures out of this runway, folks. So we've got double bubble for you today. And of course, from our position here, we're able to see. You know, GP, or have I cut you off? Oh, okay. most immediately identifiable with those uh, beautiful winglets and sometimes you can you have to double look make sure it's an a, not an A321 um, but uh, yeah Rolls-Royce RB211 engines which some would argue um, was the engine that sort of like didn't save Ro uh, Boeing with the uh, 747 pro project but certainly went a long way to um, just gonna have to tell me when he's rolling GP because I've got no visual of the roll on point on um, and an amazing Etihad uh, 787 go around just before we went well good half an hour 40 minutes before we went live on higher. So 1974. 1974, ladies and gentlemen. A300, which we see flying in here regularly with DHL, um, that we see overseas um, in, a, uh, in a freighting capacity. Obviously, um, they continued to build those jets for many years uh, very a very uh, successful platform but 1974 it's amazing isn't it so when you see those uh, those lovely old jets uh, think back to when you were what age you were in 1974 I was 11 um, yeah and that sort of like started the whole um, Tri-jets were developed after like the 707 and the uh, Convair Coronado and uh, probably got a head-up display running on that. John telling me that his, uh, his wife can't unsee the smiley face on a 777 now. I think that's the case with a lot of people. Um, yeah, impossible not to see the smiley face. Uh, have a look at this one coming in. Uh, we'll show you exactly what we're talking about. Uh, the, the, the smile of a 777. It's all sort of like a mishmash, isn't it? You know, in terms of... Um, the development programs and wow, look at that. 
and the competition with Donald Douglas back in those days. So I think the RB211 was the engine that took Rolls-Royce from being a sort of like, you know, a, a good engine manufacturer, but uh, right up to the, to the upper echelons in terms of um, turbofan technology. And what was classified then as high bypass. These are super high bypass, these things. See the smile just underneath the cockpit window there, you'll see the, you'll see the three, three nodes there, which are the uh, angle of attack sensors, pitot tubes. Got a big smile on her face, but... <laughs> Again. Reverse is open, but no one's open. Get some great banking shots here. Go triple. Nice. Wow. Now what's she carrying? Perishables maybe? Any old um, shelves at Sainsbury's were looking looking a little bit bare. So this might be um, maybe some um, maybe some uh, I don't know avocados or something. They got an Ethiopia. Vegetables. Vegetables. She's quite light. Triple seven two hundred freighter. Wow. What's going on there? Is it? Got a dirty front end. Someone's uh, brakes. Someone stuck a generator under and underneath the nose and blown a load of exhaust all over it. It's quite common. It's come from Hong Kong, has it? Okay, well that, that will then therefore be uh, electrical goods, I would imagine. Okay, so um, a special operation. Wow. So, Ethiopian. That's quite interesting. Love a 767, me. Wow. Flowers? What, from Hong Kong? I mean, uh, I'd imagine maybe flowers, uh, definitely flowers from Amsterdam, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, Airbus definitely hold the record. Three three nine. Oh, okay, so it's a uh, specialist operation then that Ethiopian have been brought on for. Um, wow, nice shots, man. Liking these shots. So that. So twice weekly operation we're hearing with Ethiopian. I'm guessing Hong Kong, London. Interesting. Why couldn't Cathay Pacific handle it? Could be down to um, pilot shortage. Could very easily be down to pilot shortage. And uh, there we are, Ethiopian offering their services. Um, 
I always said, and I still do say, that uh, Virgin Atlantic should have thought, because, I, I, that, <laughs> hey, look, the freight industry right now is 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 pretty short on its toes. In terms, well, is that, is that the right word? Short on its legs, short on its feet. I don't know. <laughs> short on something. Um, but um, yeah, the, uh, the, the 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 cargo industry is struggling a little bit right now. You wouldn't believe it, but uh, if you went to um, if you went to the likes of uh, oh, it was weather, was it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ooh. So we are going to Miami during hurricanes. Hur yeah, but it's hurricane season. Isn't it? Mate, I'll be all, I'll be all, I'll be all right up in the, uh, up in the, uh, up in the. Um, mind you, I hope you don't, it's not that bad that they're they're going to close the airfield. But just if there's some windy operations, that might be. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. There's something coming up on uh, on Wednesday, folks. Not going to tell you about just yet. Hush, hush. <laughs> just, just turn it on when you get the notification, and um, yeah. See what uh, don't say a word to don't say a word. So a very interesting historical um, past um, well the story of the um, A330 um, stemming from the A300 which was originally like I say conceived uh, way back in 1974, well, actually it entered service in 1974, uh, the A300 <coughs> Airbus. Obviously seeing that as a uh, very, <coughs> excuse me, and that was the first long haul twin engine um, wide body service, wasn't it, I think? Then it evolved, didn't it? Hello. Bit of ground effect there. Bosh. Oh no, you could you, you could claim it had six runways at one point. It's a bit like the Star of David, wasn't it? One north, one south. Um, sort of like two intersection intersecting and then a midway runway and then even a shorter one oh flipping it a bit of a shame mate because you know we all love an ATR and that's why I was uh, keeping my eye on her um, but uh, uh, sort of like took my eye off the ball there a little bit but no you wouldn't have it would have it's, you wouldn't have seen it get that thing flaps up get her back to a normally configured flight and then um, have another go. Roll up, roll up, get your landings here. Shot aces, peanuts, get them while they're on. Okay. Matt Weaver, thanks Matt. He's gifted uh, 10 memberships. Thanks, Matt, you're a star. Thank you, everybody who's gifting membership. Deborah Davies, long way off, Qatar, one world delivery, triple seven. Thank you for that. Oh, hello, we've got a couple of um, nice ones uh, way up above, eastbound. Three thirty two hundred by the looks of that. Is it following? What looks like a triple seven, but I can't, uh, I can't pick him up right now. Yeah, she's right above us. Okay, 
So I need to keep an eye on the... Um, so that separation was obviously the ATR. What, the one above me, the one right above me, because there's one behind him as well. Is that an Ameri Air France 777 going to JFK, yeah? Oh, okay. 200? Oh, it's a 300, is it? Oh, okay, it looks a little bit dumpy. Yeah, seems this, uh, seems the whole Wookiee Howl thing is uh, sort of catching on with other um, folks who are sort of like, I didn't say stealing your thunder, but you know, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, that's not their official name, that's a name that I've given them, so I uh, prefer it if it stayed that way, but hey, what can you do, man? What can you do? Is your, uh, should be in sight at some point, I would imagine. Where is she at? That is her, isn't it? It's the, the cloud, isn't it? It should be. Come on, sir. Where are you? Oh. Okay, suit yourself. Sorry about that. Oh, Cheryl. Thanks, Cheryl. Gifting five memberships. Thanks, Cheryl! A TCC blocked by a plane on the runway. Um, I think there was the, uh, the the reason for the go around was indeed um, that ATR 42 start up. So A330. Is this, is this, uh... Air Algier 330. Bosh. I don't know. So sort of like oh, easy, son. Wow. That's what we've been waiting for. Yeah. CF6. Another very old piece of technology, the engine, the CF6. Uh, but obviously um, updated, revised over time different variations, um, different power outputs. It's sit raw, it's sit raw. Was it 1958, the DC-10? Uh, came into service with the CF-6 engine. It seems very, because uh, that was way before the TriStar, way before uh, the DC. The, I don't know. Air it could be a... Uh, Euro wings operation, this or air Baltic A220. Airbus is um, new baby, isn't it, really, when you think about it. So, like, you know, originally a... Um, Bombardier. Obviously, uh, you know, when you think about it, Airbus as a consortium had the uh, the capabilities to first of all buy into that pro that program 
with the uh, with the CS 100, um, and then keep their eyes on it for uh, for a while, uh, and then deciding, you know what, this poses a bit of a threat to us in terms of our uh, medium to uh, medium to short haul, short haul to medium range. Domestic to medium, I'm guessing you could say. With the with the A320, um, and I did read some time ago that apparently Airbus are considering uh, the A2 the A220 as their future program, their future platform um, in terms of the uh, the single aisle stuff. But you know. Um, Carries a lot less passengers than the uh, 320. It's, um, 32, 3-2 on the um, 3-2 configuration on the 220, the 3-3 configuration on the uh, A. Uh, sorry, the 220. Yeah, uh, 3-2. Um, so, okay, we've got a triple going to JFK with who on it, Jilly? Mark who's a new member. funky shot there. I mean, clouds have rolled in but very broken, kind of scattered I guess you'd say wouldn't you? Direct instantly heading. Well, that should be set. Looks like uh, another 220, this time for Air France. That's that little bit where you feel the ground sort of rushing up towards you. And you almost feel that ground effect. So you sort of like flatten it out so that you don't slam it on the runway. There's a technique to it. Pratt and Whitney engines, of course, on the A220 program. Not all of the Pratt & Whitney engines are, uh, I think all new engines uh, have been modified um, with the, uh, you know, revised componentry. I'm still not sure in terms of the, uh, the, the, the contamination, as they call it, in the metal, in some of the metallurgy on the, um, in the core. What component that actually is, I'm not sure. See, there's the ground effect there. Yeah, nice. Been on a plane um, in Sydney, I think, so, during October. Yeah, it isn't any biggie. Well, it, it isn't any biggie if it's a controlled uh, toga, as in like some way out. Um, if it's late, a toga, a late toga, when they're sort of like, you know, 100 feet or something like that, uh, the power up and the climb out, the attitude of climb out. Uh, can be a bit daunting for some people because it's quite steep, you know. Uh, but obviously, it's 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 a completely controlled um, manoeuvre. 
but yeah if they go around about now then um, it's a little bit more dramatic I would have said than something when they're like a mile out or something for instance or even uh, less than that like the Etihad had left his gear down for a long long time almost like a wind shear go around even though it wasn't wind shear yeah what you're not seeing there folks is a literally a um, a wall of hot air being blown out of those engines slightly forward but mainly out and it literally becomes a uh, a wall of hot air which uh, creates the um, creates the braking power of the engines A Disney Day 44 has gifted five memberships. Why is the United plane circling Ethan Upshon? Uh, because it went around, my friend, Ethan. Um, ATR on the runway. Traffic on the runway. What we got coming from the West, GP? Let me just see if I can guess what that is. Wait a minute. She's got blue engine cows. So let's see the... I'm thinking it's either, um, it's uh, United, oh sorry, from the east, <laughs> or uh, Blue Cows, they might be Black Air Canada, there we go, that's it, Air Canada 330. Venice to Montreal. Thanks, Disney Dave. You got it, Nick Gray. Watch them close. It's great how they are so precise. The tolerances are like microns we're talking about because the last thing you need is any sort of like air disruption or those those doors to be slightly ajar even if it's a millimeter it's going to cause a tremendous amount of uh, um, turbulent well not turbulent. Seven three seven dash ten for United rolled out of the Renton factory with special SAF livery. Ah, oh, you see, that's so. Finally, United are the are the first to do it. I want to see that seven thirty seven Max with SAF livery, Jilly. That's what these that's what these guys need to be doing. Um, IAE engines, very old designed engine there, folks. Still very popular, still powering a, a high number of um, short haul jets around the world. It's a max, yeah, 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 nice. Well done, United. That's what you need to do. Take, um, take a note out of their book, other operators, please. Um, I did say to my contact, uh, Gareth, at uh, time to stand on you watch. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> um, I did say, you know, if you're going to do it, we're, we're, we're going to be covering an all SAF flight with Virgin Atlantic in November, I think it is. Um, yeah, cheers. Yeah, 28th of November, all SAF flight with Virgin Atlantic. And I said to Gareth, man, you need to put something big on the engines. He said, we can't put any stickers on the engines. Um, because of the, the carbon, of because of the paint or whatever it might be, I don't know, but uh, they're not able to... Um, oh, look at the digital charm. Um, 
because it's uh, look, it's a big tail, a little big fluffy tail. You're running in the garden, mate. Oh, that was quite a close call, man. That was quite a close call, I've got to say. If he had have run on, this triple would have gone around. It's another Saudi trip. By a reputation. Or another Saudi jet, should I say. Oh, yeah, grease that one. Oh, we need some reverses here, boy. Step on it. Nope. Wow. Maybe a little bit of late. Just to get yourself that exit. Don't want to be coming off that exit too quick, do you? Nope. He's quite happy. Look at how powerful those brakes are, ladies and gents. We're talking about around about six to eight. Normally around about, well, four to six, let's just say. Um, disc systems within each wheel so you know the power of one car braking uh, on each wheel uh, that's why the um, the 380 when it was originally designed um, was designed with no engine reverses because it has got braking power of nothing you've ever thought of before you know like um, I think it's uh, 18 wheels so 18 wheel braking or however many it is, the rear set doesn't break, I think 20 maybe, yeah, 20 wheel braking, <laughs> no, uh, Avro Arrow, uh, and we keep statistics on togas, <laughs> that would be, uh, Jay Thompson, good afternoon to you. Debbie Davies, Chris Verdonk, what did United do with the 737 Max? Question mark. Uh, just hearing um, Chris, but, uh, just seen a picture of it. Well, getting a picture of it. Um, they have um, just, I think, delivered uh, 737 Max out of Renton. Um, with the new SAF colours, um, sort of like, com you know, um, confirming their commitment towards sustainable aviation fuel uh, with United Airlines. That's what every one of these airlines is 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 aiming for. Their uh, MO will, of course, be uh, to go 100% SAF. But I'll be honest with you, folks. I say you got more chance of. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us will be pushing up the daisies before they uh, before, before they go 100% SAF. And I think that over the years, the development of um, of um, hybrid technology may potentially um, win the race. Uh, potentially, that is. I mean, uh, in terms of you know low percentage sustainable aviation fuel like around about as they're doing at the moment i think around about five percent saf wow that was a uh, very early touchdown way on the keys i think In terms of the uh, supply versus the demand, uh, there's far more demand than there is supply, of course. Um, when you look at the, but when you look at the overall, um, not so much the percentage, if you look at the overall amount of sustainable aviation fuel that is being used around the world right now, um, it is a huge saving. Uh, for the environment in terms of the, uh, the, the, the the footprint. I know it gets blended with the um, Jet A1, but hey, at the end of the day, it's reducing the um, toxicity. Toxicity. To easy for you to say. Toxicity. It is toxicity.
G'day, everyone. Rory and Roland. Flaky plane. Oh, flaky plane as in the United flaky plane. No, no. Um, really, are we? I think they sorted all those issues out. Now, it's a shame this guy didn't run on a little bit. Hurry up, son. Hurry up. When it's wet, we're going to get some very dramatic action shots. Because now we can see all the way down here, we haven't got that brick building in the way that uh, we normally do. XWB potential for a hundred thousand pounds of thrust on those engines if you want to wind them right up. Yeah, uh, in terms of our position, you see that building down there uh, with Trinity written on it. Um, that is the building that generally um, stops us being able to see all the way down the runway when these aircrafts come to a stop. Ken Alloway, BA350. Simple as that. Here comes the, uh, here comes the bother boy. He listens to madness and the clash. Susie and the Banshees. The ruts. Big DMs on it. Sixteen holders. Clean of the jet man for two hundred. Nice. It's a bit outdated now that uh, that one world uh, branding. Not the, not the wording. I'd put it big though, mate. Make a big thing of it. See these, uh, these BA jets heading out to T5, heading down to T5. They can just roll it all the way out off that, uh, that exit point. Nice and easily, easy control. Flaps will start going up quite soon because these guys are so familiar with the airport. Um, which gates they're taxiing to? They've already given their, been given their position. Um, once they're uh, right about now, they're going to be starting to reconfigure the aircraft. So you can see those flaps starting to go up. Once they know, here they go, they're starting to go up now. I think. that noise <laughs> nice triple pushing back she's got Trent's on her so it's not going to be sort of like <laughs> noisy but uh, we'll certainly see her starting up Ken Alloway, BH7, Airwear, <laughs> Airwear, there we go Stephen Lussie, good afternoon to you Deborah Davies Rachel Van Zeller, 14 years old, that Boeing 777. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Oh, here we go, she's starting already. Or is that the truck making that noise? Straining against the leash. Happy trip. All the way back, all the way back. Big gap, big gap.
do it for you. Captain Sky Marshall uh, has gifted five memberships. Thanks. 5,000 members. 88 was the best year. Uh, has gifted five memberships as well. 1988. Okay, well, around about that time. By then, so then announced the A380. 767 was flying from 70 from 82 757 from 83 which went from replaced the 727 of course the 757 What's going on? It's good that Red Bull. Yeah. Stella. Can we say? That's run a long way down, hasn't it? Um, still got a lot of time to run out. Number two start. change operations folks. Listen to those big whirring fans man. 1988, December the 21st, Pan American World Airways flight. Uh, okay, we're not going to talk about that. Sorry. I didn't read the rest of it. I should have read the rest of it. Not a good day in history day. Sorry, my apologies folks. Um, please uh, rewind. Yep, what it? 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 was interesting because I was looking at the, um, the, 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 um, the, uh, historical records for the Boeing 747 in terms of accidents, um, and we're talking about accidents which have been, um, you know, um, disasters, so to speak. Yes. And the only one that I could think of, which was uh, um, airframe related in terms of Boeing's fault, so to speak, um, 
was the Japan Airlines 747 with the bulkhead, the rear bulkhead, um, taken off half the tail. Uh, however, nice. What a sound, man. You know, when you look at uh, disasters like Tenerife and all that, it's nothing to do with Boeing, nothing to do with the jumbo jet at all. Um, weather related, of course, and other. Um, So, like I say, uh, the 747, unbelievable amount of re redundancy um, systems on the 747. When I say that, it basically means that it's got a backup for a backup for a backup. I think, um, I think I might be right in saying that she either had two wing spars or just a very, very strong wing spar, oversized wing spar. Proper American building, basically, at the end of the day. Built tough, you know. Um, proper tough aeroplane but she um, you know like I say in terms of um, disasters uh, I can only think of the bulkhead issue which could have been down to Japan Airlines in terms of their maintenance teams as well but uh, I think when she was uh, overhauled she was uh, that, that, that plate over time uh, believe it or not that Japan Airlines 747 was actually an ex test bed for um, uh, uh, for Boeing, which is uh, quite common um, for, for manufacturers to do, still doing that these days. Airbus, actually, sorry, um, Virgin Atlantic actually own um, or lease a couple of Airbus A350s that are ex-demonstrators uh, with Airbus. Um, we know that quite well. It's already been round the block a few times, got quite a few uh, hours on her. But uh, obviously the tail strike um, incident that happened with that Japan Airlines jet when it was a prototype or uh, when it was a, uh, a demonstrator with Boeing um, was fixed. But over the years, obviously the expanding and the contracting of the, um, of the, of the, of the airframe uh, meant that it weakened it and uh, the rest is kind of history. However, you have to say that, you know, you gave it a good old try. Oh, sorry, folks. That looked like a very wallowy type landing there. But the uh, the air crew of the Chip Japan Airlines jet obviously gave you know, a real good try. And that Boeing tried its hardest to. But yeah. Incredible, um, you know, safety record for the 747. Cleaning, Panav Goya, uh, Steve Basket, Daniel Kiss, Austrian UJ320 Neo lands in four minutes. Daniel, uh, Daniel, I think that is maybe um, Austrian UJ320. Okay, it's there. 
Neo. It's a good looking jet, isn't it? Because it's new. It's got Avro Arrow, uh, LFB arrival shots, very cool from this angle. Uh, yeah, folks, if you get the time, um, and this is, obviously it does um, relate to people from all around the world, uh, not just here in the UK, but um, there is a, uh, a house checker. Um, let me make sure I keep an eye on these uh, arrivals. That QR code sends you straight to a house checker page, folks. Oh, nice. All white. Again, it's just uh, standard procedures for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the thruster doors to activate, to slide, but... Um, they don't actually uh, produce any significant power. It's just there as an emergency procedure if the, or a cautionary procedure if they need a little bit more braking, which we've seen before, uh, where they sort of like, you know, they're a little bit unsure whether they're gonna make the, uh, the exit point. Uh, but yes, um, have a little look and check out and see if your house is, is safe. Uh, there's no harm in doing it, folks. Don't have to do it now, but um, apparently, um, if you're in, the, like I say, if you're in the London area, uh, these guys, it will flag it if they feel that you need um, uh, something a little bit more substantial in terms of, of, of a fire slash safety check at your house. And they will, like I say, fit fire alarms free of charge. Come out to your house, give you a fire, uh, bit of fire alarm for you give you a little bit of advice if you need it again must be a very strong crosswind uh, uh, sorry headwind it's these guys out side for that jet folks 230,000 pounds of thrust available if they want it and uh, that's why they use it on the uh, 777 200 freighter as well so she's got a very um, a very impressive all-up weight just to get a bit of ventilation in there. Sometimes they have a lower door open as well, but uh, today it's just that upper door, which we very rarely see open on a 380, has to be said. Uh, Phil Lloyd, don't think the JAL 747 you're speaking of was a freighter. Didn't say it was a freighter, my friend. Um, Phil, I said it was an X. Um, before it went to JAL, I think it was a, uh, a demonstrator with Boeing. was a high capacity um, well it was put on high capacity routes uh, Nikhil first 350-900 for Air India had her second test flight is that the new livery? well it will be won't it? Oh, so just tail livery, maybe?
Lance D, yes, you're right, that at, um, the uh, JAL crew did an incredible job in trying to keep that aircraft. Here's your uh, Austrian 320 Neo with Pratt and Whitney's, I think. May get a bit of a howl out of her. <coughs> nope, nothing. These can make a proper racket if they want to. See the um, green inner, inner, inner sleeve of the engine there, identifying it. So, wow, look how quick that thing comes to a stop. It's insane. Braking power of these things is incredible, of course. Most of the brakes nowadays used on these modern jetliners are a carbon type. making them very, very light as well, of course. Quite dusty, fortunately, but uh, extremely efficient. She's all white, she... Uh, 40 minutes remaining of um, arrivals on this runway, folks, before we switch. A321. Of course, uh, you know, in terms of... Um, we don't, I don't like to talk about air disasters, but, you know, whenever a new aircraft is in its prototype stages, it's, that's when it's most prone, obviously, to, uh, to uh, incidents and accidents. Uh, and, of course, the 320 being the first, Airbus once again being the first to, uh, to implement the fly-by-wire uh, technology on their A320. Um, obviously, uh, computer said, no, I want to land. You're telling me that I'm coming in to land. So it just carried on flaring the aircraft, didn't it? And it went down in those woods. Unfortunately, only a, um, a very small number of people on board, but uh, never a good thing. But, you know, a lot of lessons learned and the aircraft had to, thank goodness it was the case that it happened during its prototype stages and not when it was uh, flying, uh, uh, carrying passengers. Um, so, you know, When you think all the way back to then, in terms of technology, how far it's advanced. CCC um, mentioning about the engine starting procedure on um, on these jets really is down to the uh, the individual pilot, is it not? I think um, in terms of the whether they start the number one first or the number two first. Um, I was always under the impression. I mean, a lot of times we've seen. 747s uh, at Anchorage starting uh, one, two, three, four. Um, opposite, three, four, one, two. <laughs> but obviously, I think um, the number two engine on the 747, one of the engines controls the, uh, of course the 787 has a all electric start system and can, both engines can be fired up, still uses the APU to produce um, power for the starters on the um, electric starters I'm guessing and not not uh, air starter system like on a conventional uh, engine 
but um, yeah one of the um, if you've got four engine jet for example you have one of the engines or even a super twin the, the one of the engines will once that's fired up make uh, the the APU kind of redundant if you if you if you like because that can feed the the, the, the bleed air across to the starters um, but but they use uh, a lot of the times they use the, the APU to start both engines you know it, uh, it is really down to um, I think you know there are a number of uh, procedures a number of different ways it can be uh, equations not equations no. Options. Options. Mars High, Alex Thompson. Nitro purge systems on the tanks. Zippy. Good spot on the Qantas for a live stream. But Lewis Lid. Yes, it would be a good spot. Uh, standing at that door. Kind of limited uh, with your left and right movements. But even so, Ooh, skill in the big room, can I? Jorge or George? Uh, love is a gift, thrust is a must. Oh, he's trying to get in on a t shirt design, isn't he? <laughs> Only joking. Uh, now this is um, British Airways is uh, 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 um, SAF related uh, livery, isn't it? Uh, with what we call Bluebird, but um, nowhere on it does it really say, you know, sustainable aviation fuel. It's just something about their um, something written like. You need to have something that you can remember because we've seen this God knows how many times but I still can't remember what it says on the side of this thing. Our future, a future of our, of, or something like that, I don't know. There it is here though. Our most important journey yet. What? The flight or? <laughs> Be a better world, okay, fair enough. Yeah, what's that to do with then? <laughs> Need to have something a little bit more sort of like, you know, SAF, cleaner fuel, uh, efficiency, that kind of thing on it. Because what people are reading on their uh, BA, uh, you know, unless they go to your website, which is, I don't know whether there's a, a lot of uh, information on it on your website, but, uh, you know, big SAF on your engine cows, uh, you've got a big space on your engine cow. S A F. That'll get people thinking, thinking, won't it? Well, what's S A F then? You know, because 99.9% .9 of people you speak to on the high street, they wouldn't have a clue. But when you told them, oh yeah, it's uh, like um, zero emission if you fill an aircraft up with this instead of jet. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, like you know McDonald's. Oh yeah, I know McDonald's. Well, you see their big trucks. Oh yeah, I see their big trucks. You know, it says we use all our uh, our renewables, you know, the bios that come out of the, 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 the their oils. Yeah, yeah, well, they, all their trucks run on that. Um, whether or not it's full 100% or whether it's a blend, I don't know. Um, but either way, you remember that, don't you? When you see McDonald's, um, if you're running an airline, make a big point of it. It's very easy to do. Just employ people who think outside the box and aren't more interested in having their lunch break and going out, boozing out at the weekend. Someone who's really, really into their job. <laughs> Difficult to find these days, isn't it? This guy looks pretty low, to be honest with you. This could be a very early touchdown. Right on the keys. Floating it now. Here we go. On the keys, right there. Wow. We're not going to find down the wrong way. Look, he's only touching the wheel down here. Here we go. He's 
gone so far down there. We've got a tree in the way. Hooray! <laughs> We're wondering where the tree would be. <laughs> it's always got to be a tree. Well, well, it has. Because what's their better world? What is, what is their end goal? What is their better world end goal? Sustainability, sustainable aviation fuel. Oh, well, okay. So, what, what is it? The environment? What? 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 what, what? Um, wooden spoons or something. Here you go, mate. Here's a cup of water. Drink it quick because it's going to evaporate in about 20 seconds. Oh, all right. I've got. <laughs> Thanks for that. got uh, a new member. Reckless. Is it a new member? I don't know. He's uh, just done a little bit of a runway inspection, maybe a, a little report of uh, foreign object debris. Does the ATR have an APU or it needs a GPU? TCC. Good question. I think the ATR has um, a, uh, a, a, a um, the, one of the engines, the number two engine, I think it is, actually has an inbuilt system which uh, works alongside to start the engines. I think it's, um, yeah, I think, I think there's something, it's something to do with that. So you can see the big old fuel tanks there, folks. Yeah, we, uh, Annie Alba, good day to you. Mark Barr, very warm welcome to all new members today, indeed. H, Captain Sky Marshall. Uh, ramp H prop brake, which allows one engine to operate as the APU. Prop brake, what's that? Okay, so 10,000 tonnes of SAF was used or delivered to British Airways by their UK supplier. Um, so all UK, um, B, uh, sorry, all BA flights operate with a level of SAF. We, they, they, they don't say how much and understandably so, because it all will depend on the individual flight, I'd imagine. But, um, you know, <clears throat> You've got, to, you've got to understand one thing, and that is that SAF is probably about, I think, how many more times expensive than, um, than Jet A1? In terms of its, 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 you know, the demand and its availability, very small. But, but um, interesting to hear, what was it, 66, Jilly? The, um, the suppliers of man, the company manufacturers Philips 66 very interesting sustainable waste feedstocks now that's something I'd like to uh, speak to somebody about sustainable waste feedstocks is that is that from um, is that from sustainable waste feedstocks would that be from farming would that be from farming Leftovers from your Sunday lunch, would it? Eve Hosker flown a max twice over the Atlantic before they were grounded, and just before the line crash, it's still for 100% safe. Yes, indeed. It's a perfectly safe aircraft now, of course. Wow, really? Oh, you need a. It's a bit like when you're extracting perfume from a flower, isn't it? You need about 40 tons of flour buds to fill a little tiny jar of um, you know is that is the sort of like you know you need mass 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 production 
of this stuff. Um, Miles High, big boy inbound. Thank you, Miles. Sarah Lancaster, Matt Reed, LA Girl uh, Emirates. I'm seeing EK29, HGC uh, number one. Zippy 380 is uh, running on chip. Oh, start up. 767400. Let's just grab this 330 standby. So we might have some folks on that aircraft who are friends of a member who are coming for some kind of a Beatles um, uh, gig, festival-y type thing. Hey, that must be pretty cool going to that. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you tomorrow, I'll miss you. <laughs> yeah. Wow, especially if it's a... Uh, that, so you're gonna have loads of tribute bands, aren't you? Yeah. Strawberry fields forever. Yeah. I love the idea of that, man. See, I never get a chance to go to something like that because I'm always working for you guys. I was thinking about actually um, not going for my golfing holiday next year, cancel it and going to the new forest and just camping on my own for a week. <laughs> I'll get bored in about three minutes because there's no planes over the top. <laughs> I could be playing golf now. Oh, I could be filming it. Oh, it's not winds that oh, you can throw there, Jenny. Right, I'm coming home. <laughs> three hours after I get there. <laughs> yeah, camped in the garden. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So bad. Think. Think Pratt and Whitney's and then Pratt and Whitney's. 747 412 freighter, 10 minutes out, going to Liège, Robert. Killing the same. Is that. What's that? Out going to the edge. Jules Harris, New Forest, not far from Bournemouth. Yeah. Here we go. Michael White, yes, I know what you're saying. Good 340 uh, traffic at BOH. Listen to this. She's gonna, uh, she gonna turn right and come straight at us. No, she's gonna taxi and turn left, I think. Oh, hold on. No, she's coming at us. Here we go. Nice, another nice little burst maybe of power. A little bit of a ramp there. Van Roy has gifted a membership. Rob, thank you so much. Welcome everybody, hope you're doing well. Um, 6,000% increase in web traffic 
uh, last time we were here for the London Fire Brigade folks. So thank you to everybody who, you know, we, we made, if look, we might save someone's life here, um, making them realize, oh, blimey, hold on a minute, yeah, my, uh, my scooter, I charge it in my son's room, you know, I'll leave it on charge in his son's room. If you've got no opportunity to charge your, uh, um, um, a rechargeable device like that, uh, if you don't have a, a garage or a garden or somewhere or an outbuilding where you can charge the batteries where it's safe to do so, um, then, you know, all I can recommend is obviously charging those batteries whilst you are in the room and able to uh, keep an eye on them because they do get hot. Well, not always, but sometimes they do get hot. Um, just, you know, keep an eye on stuff. Just be wary of things, you know. Um, and also make sure that... Um, is it the... Uh, is it carbon monoxide detector? Is that carbon monoxide detector? And also your... Um, and, your, and, your and your fire alarm, you know, your, your, your fire detector. Wow! Something's growling out of 27 left. And we're going to see, though, that sounds 380-ish. <sighs> sounds heavy, man. Yeah. See a little... There she comes. Oh, no, triple seven. <laughs> 200 as well. Lovely old Rolls-Royce. Oh. Uh, no, 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 no. There's a dirty, great big cloud over the top of me. Um, and I'm not able to... See, literally right over the top of me, yeah? Heading where? Heading which, which direction? Oh, heading east to Liège. Okay, well, I should get her then. There she is. through that, uh, there she is then. <laughs> right on that cloud edge. Come on, out you come. Don't be shy, girl. Isn't that beautiful? You can tell she's a 400 because of her uh, wing tips. She's got the uh, raked wing, t uh, sorry, the fence style wing tip. Which uh, I think is questionable over uh, who was the first to uh, develop that, whether it was um, the MD 11 or uh, 747 with the 400. I think the I think it was the, was it the 100 to 200 was the circular, it was just the staircase and a, and a few other modifications, maybe a, a little bit more room upstairs in, in, the, in the hump uh, of the 747, 200 versus the 300, uh, 100. Um, and then of course she went, uh, really stepped it up with the, with the 400, uh, the 300, which was the, I think, I think the 300 went, stretched up a deck didn't it i think and then the 400 went with the hey, talk about 747s till the cows come home really station commander here at uh at the LFB today for Greenwatch. Um, his uncle flew uh, Lancasters and he's still got his operations book um, and he's going to bring it in next time. I'll come die and see it and see what squadron he flew for. He's a pilot on Lancasters in the Second World War. Um, and of course, as you know, I'm a massive um, amateur historian of Bomber Command. Having read so many books, I have told him that he needs to read some of these books that I've uh, trained in Canada, like so many of them did. Uh, a Lamb, how does the aircraft uh, descent systems work? I'm thinking he's uh, saying there. 
good question that well to be honest with you it's it's something it's input from the pilots um, in terms of the altitude uh, if they're descending to a certain altitude if they you know the tower says descent 10,000 feet off there on there if they're top of descent they will be given instructions to start a steady descent uh, into the airport. So uh, clear flight, flight level 150. Um, heading whatever it might be. Uh, if that's the case, then uh, that's all inputted on the uh, on the on the on the on the aircraft's dashboard. So to speak. It's, um, you know, as simple as that. There's little dials which uh, will dial in the uh, the heading and also the um, the altitude as well. The aircraft systems will then work together to create a smooth um, controlled descent um, with the speed as well. Um, however, the final stages, it's the final countdown. Uh, the final stages of the um, of the approach, uh, the tower may ask the pilots to speed up a little bit or uh, slow down a little bit, depending on the, the separation that they've got. This is all manual from this position on here. Could be turning the uh, autopilot off as low as this, folks, believe it or not. Loop, 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 loop. I've heard it when I've uh, been on descent on these little 320s. You can hear it aim through the cockpit door. <laughs> All flight details, Captain Sky Marshal, uh, will be entered on the ECAMs. Yeah, all the um, the waypoints and all that for the flight itself. Um, just check those brakes, will you, mate? Sounds like an old London taxi. Where to, Governor? Uh, the uh, the Museum of London, please, old boy. Right, you are, Governor. Been watching the football, have you? Uh, no, not really. Doing anything nice for the weekend? No, I'm not having my hair cut, mate. Days though, is it? You can break perspex screen between them. Very little, sort of like. I do some slide it back, don't I? Ah, oh, tell you what, the missus was saying the other day. <laughs> I just want to get there, thanks. Oh, Rachel Vanzelli, you wouldn't want to put WD 40 on your brakes. Um, that's one place you definitely. Dry brakes is critical. Um, you don't lubricate like brakes other than the hydraulic systems that might be powering the, the calipers, etc. etc. But uh, yeah, definitely don't be spraying your WD 40 on your brakes, otherwise, you won't be stopping. <laughs> uh, Alex Thomas, American has some old A320s as well, though, and all are retrofit. Uh, what's that? Retrofit with what, uh, Alex? Um, I think some let the air autopilot fly right down to the minimums. I would prefer taking it from flight level 100, Tim Rotunda. Yeah, same here. Um, One good thing, obviously, with uh, autopilot approach uh, down to the minimums is that uh, it's sort of like, you know, if there is a, uh, an issue with sort of like crosswinds or anything like that, the aircraft is an incredible, sophisticated piece of um, 
engineering which uh, which will control your drift and um, those uh, those crosswinds stuff like that um, and counteract everything for you rather than you putting all the work in um, but I'd certainly want to take control of it so I've I've got some time to deal with it if you know what I mean if, if when it comes off autopilot it uh, gets caught by a southern oh this is LATAM isn't it We've got a new service with LATAM haven't they coming in November to um, is it Puerto Rico or no um, um, Lima I think Lima I read the other day Nigel Clinning, interesting. So now how has that guy not been sort of like, you know, I wouldn't say reprimanded, but pulled into the office uh, by his superiors and saying, look mate, you know, um, unless of course he is clearing it with Eurowings first. Karen North Angel, uh, thank you. Thought Northern, Northern, Northern girl, Northern girl, Northern girl. Uh, Karen, thank you so much um, uh, for gifting a big Gen TV membership. Thank you, thank you so much. Bruce McDonald. Good day, Bruce. Hope you're well. Pardon me. The old Global Airlines thing's gone a little bit quiet, hasn't it, recently? Mind that? It's uh, a bit of a sort of like, you know, there's a few people uh, sort of um, questioning it. There's a few of the, uh, the, 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 the um, you know, a few people saying, oh, I hope it happens, sort of thing. But I've got, I'm just going to say this, folks. Um, I was a little bit uh, confused by some of the quotes that have been made by uh, Global Airlines and its representatives. Um, one of the quotes is that, uh, and this is from, I believe, from um, the man himself, and he quotes, transatlantic airline passengers are sick and tired of their treatment, according to the founder of the new UK carrier, pledging to make customers feel like a million dollars. Um, I've got to be honest with you. If, if, if the travelling public, UK public, were sick and tired, be a really big uh, news piece because I personally have not had any issues with um, uh, transatlantic travel with both American and UK carriers uh, and even with um, Iceland Air as well and also uh, uh, Lufthansa and so on and so forth but uh, I, I honestly I'm a little bit confused about that he's obviously had a few issues himself and a, maybe a couple of incidents where but treated like, you know, uh, sick and tired. I mean, honestly, it, it sounds it sounds almost, um, you know, um, Stone Age. Uh, <laughs> what he's talking about there, in terms of their. Um, he says in an interview with PA News Agency, Mr. Asquith said people are sick and tired of the service they get on current airlines. We will be better. Okay, well, that's great, mate. I mean, uh, or, or if you're good, that's all that is important. Um, you don't need to sort of like, you know, really lay on that thing, I don't think. I think that's a little bit harsh, in it? Um, but then again, I don't know. Um, 
it's a big thing, folks, in it. You know, uh, the first thing is that uh, Global Airlines A380s have not been cleared to fly into American airspace yet, um, which is which can take up to two years to get that certification. Secondly, New York only has um, um, gates for a, a limited number of uh, A380s, and I think BA have got those, haven't they? Or um, or, or whoever, or whatever, or Korean maybe, or uh, whoever it might be, Emirates and all that, those guys. Yeah, um, but there's a limited number of gates available. Uh, but, but, yeah, and, and maintenance, folks. I mean, you're talking about a British airline here. It's going to be operating from Gatwick. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe they're uh, going to be... Um, outsourcing their uh, their maintenance to um, to somebody like uh, um, Lufthansa Technik who have a great um, ooh, nice pull on shot at the back you know they may be using uh... so now locking on to the ILS this jet Straighten it up. Call the tower up. 10 miles. Fully established. Continue. Wow, look at that lurch, man. Yeah. being pushed out of the side of the engines there a wall of hot air and you could actually I don't know if you could see that then did I see that or is that did I just think that I saw it the um, the blocker doors activate or deactivating closing up Yeah, somebody mentioned about Global Airlines potentially being a paper airline. Never heard that word used before. I kind of know what they're talking about. Um, devaluations in loyalty platforms. Well, I've got to be honest with you, man. There's got to be a reason why they're doing it. Um, and uh, there isn't enough money, or, uh, as much money around as there used to be. I have to say, um, <laughs> you know, um, it's a bit like opening a um, opening a new restaurant in the middle of COVID, isn't it? It's like no one can go because the, because it can't go out. It's, I, I, I don't know the the um, the idea of, of starting a new airline, a brand spanking new airline, right in the midst of what is a global recession, really. Um, in terms of, you know, the, uh, how are these? I don't know, I, look, man, I, you know, I don't like to be a pessimist. Uh, I'm just a realist, really, at the end of the day. And I do wish Mr. Asquith the very best um, with his plans. And um, I'm, I'm planning on getting a hat made from um, uh, a marzipan or something so I can actually eat my hat uh, the day that the first aircraft takes to the skies. I promise you folks, I will do that. Uh, Jilly, find a, um, a, a cake manufacturer who can make a cake out of an edible hat, please. Go! <laughs> I don't need a sell-by date for 2026 though, isn't it? Or 2024, isn't it? Hey, that jet is lining up for the uh, for the southern. Oh, we only got two more coming in on this one. Oh, blimey! Yeah, look at that. Three o'clock already. 
Flipping heck. Now this could make a bit of a noise. Wow, I love that shot, mate. All that uh, negative energy at the anchor. Or should I say positive energy? Yes, yes. Electric brakes, that's why you... If he's, if he's happy with 60% load factor, that's 40% less than what he was thinking of, isn't it? <laughs> he's already down in the numbers. But uh, look, man, uh, I, don't, I've got, I don't even know who the fella is. I believe that when he was a kid, he was the only bloke to fly to every country in the world or something like that. Um, and good luck to him. You know, I've, I wish him all the best. How he's made all these millions, I do not know. Um, wherever it is, just from being doing what he did. But... Um, obviously there's banks involved there must be investors involved somewhere along the line oh there we go she's down last arrival of the uh, of the day today CF6s all the uh, global airlines why is he called it global airlines if he's only flying to New York I don't understand that anyway whatever whatever you know <laughs> it's a bit like the World Series isn't it oh really what countries are they in uh, just America Jack Small has gifted a membership. Jack, thank you so much. First of the uh, departures starting to come out. Now we're going to see uh, aircraft climbing out literally uh, in front of us, folks. Watch this. Miles High, Branson said it best. How to become a millionaire, be a millionaire and buy an airline. <laughs> yeah, but then you can't blimey. You could go bust as quickly as, uh, as anything. Um, if it doesn't succeed. Now, Branson picked a good time to go into um, to, to, to transatlantic travel in terms of um, just trying to be another operator, which is a bit more funky than the other operator, if you see what I mean. Uh, look at Virgin versus versus BA. Virgin are, are sort of like, well, it's linked to a record company, isn't it? so it's, it's going to be a bit funky, isn't it? Um, but, uh, but obviously there was a huge amount of um, disagreement between uh, British Airways and Virgin Atlantic and uh, the big no way BA thing that Branson did. He, uh, fair play to him, you know, he had the... He had the uh... out first Brian Stewart saying it's not my friend it's this yeah how cool are these shots folks now one thing we do have to consider is that Dreamliners can be as low as that tree there um, so we'll have to consider that um, waiting for then. David E. David 
Foy. And they go south up there. Look how deep they are. TCC, Nigel Clinning. He thinks he can try and break into London, New York market. He's a mistake. Well, you know what, Nigel? Um, good luck to him. If, you know, because you've got a, you, 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 Virgin Atlantic. Um, hello, haven't seen that for a while, have we? We'll see that going out, no doubt. Jilly won't be very happy to see that, but anyway, it is a beautiful. She's Jilly has even admitted that that is a beautiful livery. Said it like that. Yeah, yeah it's a beautiful livery. Yes, it's very, very nice. Anyway, can we talk about something else? La 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 la. No, it's dead. Sorry. Um, yeah, you know, uh, the likes of Virgin Atlantic and British Airways uh, and American Airlines and United are going to have something to say about the New York routes in terms of uh, all they need to do is sort of like um, pull a bit of investment back from other um, departments and maybe reduce the price of their New York routes. I have never been uh, disgusted by my travel on Virgin Atlantic or British Airways or United or American or any of the carriers that I've used and I don't fly um, business class, I don't fly first class, I always fly maximum I go is uh, premium economy, um, if not economy and I'm always feeling very, you know, it'd be, a, it'd be detrimental to them wouldn't it, uh, any airline uh, to get a bad reputation or oh, you're bleeding terrible, you know. Um, Obviously, people have their, uh, their, their, their um, we, we, we joke about, you know, the, 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 the low cost carriers and understandably so. If you're buying a cheap as chips ticket, don't expect to be treated like a first class passenger for crying out loud. Um, but even then, you know, when I've flown with, uh, with EasyJet, with Ryanair, always felt, you know, um, uh, looked after and, um, you know, you don't want to give your... Uh, airline a bad rep, your employers a bad rep, or rap, sorry. Um, so I, 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 I disagree with that. People are sick and tired of being treated like... People are sick and tired. What, what is it? I've, I've never heard that before. It's the first time I've ever heard it, to start with. Um, and if it was such a big thing, it would be all over the news, wouldn't it be? Oh, like Watchdog and sort of like, you know, the British public are absolutely fed up with um, with with the exit. Not heard it, not heard it. But anyway, you know, maybe he's had a couple of bad experiences himself. Now that looks like a triple seven. Two hundred. I don't know who it is. If it's Air France, maybe. Lovely old chicks. It must probably a three hundred actually. Mind you, no. Yeah, she has got the extended wing on it, hasn't it? Yeah, you can just see the winglet on it. See the right wing tip on it? Yeah, that's a 300, isn't it? That's Air France, isn't it? GP, straight across the top. Right, you're there. Oh, we got the runway inspection, maybe. Oh, it's Air Canada again. With, with, with white engine caps. Oh, it's an old livery Air Canada. Uh, Scropey, before they swap runways, is there time to check for FOD or not? Yes, there is Scropey, and that's, uh, I'd imagine what, well, actually, I think it was the, the 350. They will um, find a, um, uh, they will do a, a, a runway inspection when the uh, opportunity arises. I think they're, uh, probably get a few aircraft out first and then find a, uh, a opportunist moment it's um, one of our uh, operations vehicles uh, standing by over there maybe just uh, checking to see what's going on uh, still got approaching aircraft on runway 27 left Matman the Matman anyone flown on Norse Airlines Well, I am. Um, however, you know, again, I've got to say, you know, you don't want to get a reputation as a bad airline, do you? You know, in terms of your customer service. That's what's critical. Um, and look, we all do have 
bad experiences on a flight, whether it's baggage related, whether it's a delay, whether it's a, a grumpy um, uh, cabin attendant, whether it's whoever it might be, you just don't know, it, what, or whatever the reason it might be. You're gonna have it from time to time, aren't you? It's the sort of like, um, it's, the, it's the way the old cookie crumbles, isn't it? There you go, 339, Virgin Atlantic. reaching around about 120 knots soon so she's gonna go up quite quick I think maybe she's ready to go yeah how's that audio come out folks she uh, hammers past us. Pretty good shots, aren't they? What's that, GP? Is what? Yeah, the, the, the London Fire Brigade station where we are now um, is, although it's, um, you know, it is this, the, the, the proximity of it being as close to um, the airport itself, they will get involved with operations if needs be. Uh, obviously, the, the, um, the airside um, teams um, have a pretty substantial number of, of units. Um, but if the, if the situation arises, these guys down here have a unit where they're able to put one out if they need to. But obviously, um, its primary um, operations is to look after the local community. Um, but like I say, if the situation arises where they need all hands on deck um, over, here in, uh, over here at London Heathrow, uh, they have been called on many times before. Joeing Triple Seven is a returning member. Welcome back, Joey. Rotate. You're sitting on that left-hand side of the plane, you look down and you look at Terminal Five, that end of the airfield disappearing as you pass over the um, pass over the reservoir on your left, heading straight towards. Windsor, depending on which way she's going, um, either turn left or turn right. And um, oh, what at Heathrow? Oh, blimey! Never got a shot like that before. Stephen Luskin back in that netty head blue. I'm miles behind on the comments, man. So why doesn't this thing been keep pace with? Should be all messages, yeah, Jelly. All messages, yeah. Flipping just, it's just Ken Alloway, A350, 1000 to Denver, Colorado. Wow, nice. Um, 
J Mank, Nikhil, Avro Arrow. Yes, more of those undercarriage wheel shots, please. Yeah, love it. All that weight being lifted off. You see the oleos extend as well. Rab H almost reach out and touch the wing tip. Jordan Charlie loving that shot. Simon Dinsmore mirrors. Singapore slinger 380 due uh, in five minutes. Is it due out or due in? Seven four seven jumbo. How are people finding the increasing insurance premiums for travel cover and increasing flight costs? I truly believe we are being deterred from travelling purely by pricing Joe Public out of it. Uh, well, we would be able to sort of like you know uh, confirm or deny that that uh, that allegation. Um, we're still finding um, tickets. Ticket to the one. You do well. Look at you. You've got a big tail. Surprised to sling it into a side um, drift and do crab crab puffs with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, Jilly, you, you can uh, you can you can sort of like you know, I'll say comment on it, but. Uh, you know, in terms of our, uh, in terms of our, um, our flight costs of um, flying, uh, like for example, last year, the last time we went to Miami, versus this time that we're going to Miami, in terms of the cost of the flight, is it uh, a lot more expensive? About the same price? Um, is it? Uh, I, I, I don't really know. Is it a couple of hundred quid more? Is it? Uh... I mean, we 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 were surprised that our uh, the hotel that we got, you know, um, cheaper than last time. Yeah. Yeah. It all depends on the time of uh, that you're booking it, really. Whether it's in. Um, in, uh, in, in, in during holiday season and all that kind of thing, uh, it really does depend on the on the so he's got the game right there. Jordan Charlie. What's happening with chat? Oh. Neil Sohn. Euro wings. 3 1 now. There it is now. Little CFM 56s. Crazy to think that little 318 is also powered by CFM 56. Almost too powerful for it in a funny sort of way. Obviously derated with its thrust settings. Power settings, should I say. Supermax. Good afternoon, Supermax. Something starting up in the cul-de-sac. What the old one? The old one. The old booking. Scropey, why can't people have their blinds down on takeoff? Well, Scropey, it's a, that's airline to airline, isn't it? Really, uh, the U.S. carriers don't really care, um, but the British carriers generally. Um, British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, prefer the blinds to be up or undimmed. If it's on the uh, and the reason for that is so that if there is an incident and the uh, the people need to evacuate the aircraft quickly, those key few seconds that you need for your eyes to uh, uh, you need to accustom your eyes to the to the 
brightness, so to speak. Um, will um, could be critical. Of course, you've got the idiots who will um, reach up and open the... Um, I was amazed, actually, you know. I saw a video the other, a, a couple of weeks back of that Russian jet that, uh, that crashed on landing. OK, go ahead, GP. Wow, OK. It's a scropey, yes. That's uh, same time of the year, Jilly. Oh, Rachel Van Zeller, apparently they're up in Australia, uh, the blinds, window blinds. Yeah, that might be the reason. It does always depend on the, uh, the, the, the date that you're flying. Or time of year, should I say. Whether it's, you know, Thanksgiving and all those kinds of things, and blah, blah, blah. Might hear that, uh, 380. Yeah, I'd, um, that, uh, that aircraft that cr crashed on landing, wasn't it? That, uh, it, I think it had a, a technical issue and then turned back or something, that uh, Russian jet. Um, evacuated slides came out can't believe the amount of people i saw getting off that plane with their suitcase with, with their hand baggage you know, you know i'm talking about like you know uh cases that would have had to have gone in the overheads you know you are if you if, you, if you're somebody who would do that you know, you would sacrifice, you wouldn't sacrifice a pair of flipping underpants or a couple of pieces of paper for, uh, for somebody's life, then, you know, you're a selfish so-and-so, I've got to be honest. Um, but uh, very, very disappointed to see the number of people come off that aircraft with what was clearly um, Carry on baggage. Anyway, squirrel hit by lightning. There we go, it was, wasn't it? Penny Haskins, Ken Alloway, Neil So just about to watch myself take off. Neil So. Is he the fella on the uh, 777 or. Uh... John. See, there you go, Jordan. You get, you get so in, engrossed in watching chat that he's missed the switch over. That was 25, 20 minutes ago. Look at me neck. Oh, well. You here to watch planes or... Um... Anyway. Um, off two sheds, Jackson. Favourite underpants. Mars High, Alex Thomas. Standard lens, Alex. No extra lens on this camera it's the it's the stock lens that comes you can't put another lens on this VXF one 787 is a very complex machine and Nick Hill saying indeed it is a very complex machine um, highly technologically advanced for its time um, but I've noticed on some of the 787s that I've flown they've all already the window dimmers are not working properly What you're going to notice um, on the 777 and the 787 and the 767, folks, is the uh, undercarriage tilt mechanism that's inbuilt into the uh, into the main gear. Where um, as they lift off, um, when they go for the um, for 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 the gear up lever, there's a system that automatically tilts the undercarriage. Uh, I wouldn't say level, but at an angle. Uh, that allows it to um, fold up comfortably into the undercarriage bay. Uh, that's what um, Boeing incorporated into their systems, whereas Airbus um, have designed, um, made other design changes like the A350 that has a slightly um, na 
narrower. Inboard truck on the A350 1000. Uh, I read somebody mentioned the other day that apparently Airbus are having problems with um, premature, uh, funky, premature uh, tyre wear. Um, on their A350s. Now, whether that's related to the 350 1000 or the 350 900, I'm not sure. Um, nice front end shots, yes. Uh, Rwand Air, somebody mentioning there, somebody obviously asking what is the, um, what is the aircraft there, that 330 indeed, it is Rwand Air. Uh, comes in, I think, in the morning, stays there all day, and then goes out at night. Uh, Bobby Fitzsimmons, interesting to read that Boeing 787 was the alternative to the Boeing Sonic Cruiser. It's the alternative to the Bonic Boeing Sonic Cruiser. Um, let me just have a look at that and see. Just have a look and see what that brings up. Oh, interesting, okay. Uh, the Boeing Sonic Cruiser was a concept jetliner with a delta wing canard configuration, uh, much like Concorde. It was distinguished from conventional airliners by its delta wing and high subsonic cruising speed of up to Mach 0.98. Boeing first proposed it in 2001, but airlines generally preferred lower operating costs over higher speed. Well, there you go. That was uh, sort of like um, way back in the early days, uh, very early days. We're talking about like the post-war era. You know, 1954, Concorde was originally conceived uh, as a potential um, supersonic jetliner. It was a raw course, remember back then, you know, the world was in a fantastic state financially. Um, you know, no oil crisis, all those kinds of things. And uh, the future looked bright in terms of like, you could, you know, knock yourself out, do whatever you like in terms of uh, aircraft design. And um, Concorde was uh, conceived around about 1954. But eventually when she was, a, a, the, the, uh, the prototype was first built, obviously met with um, amazement by um, by the uh, potential operators um, the uh, manufacturers had much bigger ideas for it thought that it would uh, sell as well as like you know the 707 in terms of its numbers the 747 um, transatlantic travel being cut by half that kind of thing you know um, but of course it just couldn't hold the capacity that the big jetliners did and that's why I think that uh, there were only some um, cases of uh, you know Braniff I think uh, leased one or something but it was just really Air France Singapore Airlines were looking at doing it as, as, as being an operator was at the end of the day so that's interesting 787 was the uh, preferred platform uh, when given the option of uh, supersonic well subsonic but um, that type of travel versus Right, up go the gears. Or up goes the gear, sorry. To get it to, to get my uh, Scott Heatherington. Is there such a thing? Okay. So seven eight seven. Let's just have a look and see what this is about. Triple.
Lance. Yeah, Lance, I've got to be honest with you, mate. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got, I think, I think um, Overture has got uh, just as much chance of getting in the air as James Asquith has with his 380 fleet. Um, I think by the time, I mean, don't, just don't get me wrong. Well, I've actually, no, let's be, let's be fair. Overture is a long way down the line. They've even, you know, built a, is it a manufacturing plant. Watch the undercarriage tilt. behind the tree that one again you know I would love to see the likes of Overture succeed I'd love to see that I mean can you imagine you know being here at Heathrow and seeing a, um, a supersonic jet uh, <laughs> operating out of London Heathrow I'd, I'd like nothing more um, just uh, like again, I, I have to say, uh, people might sort of like say you're boring, Jerry, but I'm a realist, and um, it is all down to demand and what these um, operators want. What I still kind of get, can't get my head around, is that originally Overture was announced as having seating for 56 passengers or something like that, um, but the recent, the most recent images. I've seen of Overture is much more Concorde-esque with um, a lot of windows. Um, now, whether that's down to the fact that obviously being a supersonic jet, it has to have very small windows. Uh, it can only go so big. So, you know, um, because of the, um, the, the friction and uh, the speed and so on and so forth. I think that's something related to that. And so as a result, uh, maybe they've just put a lot of windows in there, making it look like it's got more capacity. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Avro Arrow, that United off to Denver. Thank you, Avro. Aer Lingus. Neo Jet. Yeah. Wow, we're so lucky, folks. To be where we are. Thank you, London Fire Brigade. Hello, you gear going up, mate, or not? That's interesting. Don't very often see that. So, gear doors didn't even come down. Um, so, they've obviously got a brake issue or uh, something like that with that 320 Neo. Probably find around about two minutes. Maybe one of the wheels. Um, is continuing to spin um, the, uh, the braking mechanism, the system to brake the wheels when they uh, when they call for gear up has uh, malfunctioned. Therefore, that wheel is still spinning. Wow, it's he had going long. Wow, that's a really long climb, a really long run for Etihad. Gear up finally. Look how long that run is, man. Now, I'm wondering whether it's, uh, is it worth me repositioning? That's the, uh, the dream line. Ah, we've got a runway inspection. So let me just have a quick look. Stand by. 
up two, three, down two, three, walk two, three, along two, three. Oh, it's heavy carrying 5,100 people, Jilly. <laughs> Girl, you're a heavy lot, aren't you, hey? Hold it right there, Shim Shan. Got a big Canada, Air Canada triple lining up, standby. Over. Now we've got a big burly triple coming out. Oh yeah. Now watch the watch the tilt, folks. Quality mobile video gifting five memberships. Thanks. Quality mobile video. Watch the undercarriage tilt, the main gear, which I'm gonna focus on here. A leap, isn't it? Now, what's the undercarriage tilt? There it is. Obviously, breaking all the wheels first. Breaking as in stopping. Nice. Thank you, quality mobile video. Qatar 380 sitting in the wings. Interesting sort of standoff at the moment between a few jets. Delta 339. Here's another one that's going to possibly go long.
using a lot of runway. Now you know what to look out for, folks. You ever see one of these things screaming over your head? Look out for the undercarriage. Rachel Manzella loving that delivery. Makoto. Can indeed. Ian Morrison, LA girl. Melody, aviation fan. Just get me level because my level is not 100% at the moment. Stand by. YouTube, welcome to Big Jet TV. YouTube. Now, in the winter or in the autumn, you're going to see these things powering up lots of ingestion. No, Ginny does not listen in on ATC. It's got enough going on with me flipping, barking at her down the phone. Here comes um, here comes the uh, livery that doesn't say much. <laughs> Yo, Kennedy, Ali Francis. I'm not saying you have to, but we all go one good thing. No, 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 no. Of course. We all gave her compound to a charity. It'd be an amazing thing, wouldn't it? It's kind of what we did at the last time. That is the command, pull up elevator, uh, but very, very small amount. So much so that sometimes you can feel yourself pulling a little too too hard on the stick um, and your rate of ascent is, uh, is a little bit too steep um, because I think it's just so powerful, you know. Once it gets airborne, um, you need to control that uh, rate of climb Was watching a San Francisco. Somebody said Mattel told them about it and they said, pay attention. They're, quite, uh, they're known to be quite arsey, old uh, American ATC, aren't they? Often see videos on YouTube with uh, the ATC getting quite angry with uh, mainly foreign carriers, I have to say, because, uh, you know. Understandably, some f foreign pilots, even though they use uh, English as the um, global language, uh, when you're talking like that and going moving over to the and all that, you know, he's an American, you know, it's like, what? <laughs> what now? Hold a position. Oh. I said, hold that position. Oh, VJ, that, um, that, got two eight three eight is in the shot, same shot, Ethiopian triple seven freighter is, uh, outbound. That'll go up like a rocket ship, mate, right in front of us, I think. She wants to fly. Go on, girl, up you go. What, here at the station? No. 
that's what all the clearances have been about is that I can operate independently um, yeah wow she was heavy man still got a lamp post in the shop Hayabusa Causing obviously a uh, significant wake turbulence sometimes, not all the time. Of course, on a day like this where there's a, a decent crosswind, uh, that wake being blown and dispersed a lot quicker than normal if it was a steer that still a, 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 a still day. It's got a retro look about it, hasn't it? Jordan Charlie. It's so big it almost looks slow. Mm. Phil Sky, crabbing already. Bruce McDonald going long. Sailor Mike. Funny on my PC, I'm watching the Qatar 380 on my TV. It's almost two minutes behind and the BA Dreamliner is taking off. Wow. Uh, aviation 4K HGC Qatar QR4 number five on flight radar 24. Uh, Stuart Pritchard. Yes, Stuart, we're uh, obviously looking into Australia. We need to kind of... Jenny told me the other day that we need to kind of think about doing that quite soon as well. Yeah, but winter in Australia isn't like winter over here, is it? Oh, okay, sorry, they're going into their summer now and out of their winter. Right, yeah. Okay, we need to look at that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Skilling, loving the China Southern livery. Yes. Avro Arrow. First break in China, so great bit of yeah. Listen to this thing. Yeah. See that gear goes straight up, no tilt mechanism on the uh, on the airbus. No, uh, no, you cannot. Um, you cannot. If you're a 
premium if you're a member on Big Jet TV. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> Here's your answer to that. There's your Ethiopian freighter coming out, standby. Uh, just grab this L out. woven carbon fuselage on the Dreamliner as opposed to a um, another system of manufacturing technique with the carbon system on the uh, 350. Charles Dienst. Aerocentric. Yes, indeed. Uh, interesting, I was mentioning the other day when um, uh, Shay Oakley put up um, one of his daily posts up of the Hawker Siddeley Trident. Um, lots of factoids about it, and one factoid that wasn't mentioned was that the Hawker Siddeley Trident was the first aircraft to be equipped with Autoland. Bless you. Um, yeah. Uh, and that was especially relevant during foggy conditions, especially here at London Heathrow. Got a start up. Ah, this BA jet's gonna um, fire up. She's got GEs on her. So this is, uh, you're gonna hear the, uh, ooh, got a 380 pushing back as well, folks. I guess you're all um, keeping an eye on this on flight radar as well. But this BA jet's gonna push back and start right in front of us. Bill Boardman, what do you think about the twin engines on the updated 7s? Have not even heard anything about it, Phil, to be honest with you. What's that then? A, um, uh, a 747 redesign with twin engines, with two engines. Interesting. Uh, I'd like to uh, find out about that. Rob Blackman, good day to you. Sailor Mike Virgin V Tom 339 taxiing for departure will be one year old next month. Ah, oh, first birthday. Gonna hear the start up on this uh, channel set. Well, we might do, we might not. The teal um, Vietnam jet on approach and touching down. Two seven left. memberships tash thank you so much lovely generous thing to do we've got christopher it's a brand new member Joey, the triple seven India whiskey off to Bermuda. Very nice. Oh. 
Robert Hilton. Logan Air Tartan on the tail plane is registered as number 11744 on the Scottish registers of Tartan. being on remote. What a beautiful shot. Dapples of sunlight. Avro Arrow watched some of the last Miami streams the other night. Highly recommended. Great prep for the upcoming late September trip. Road trip. Laughs included. Downside, no jilly this time. <laughs> Centric. Obviously, talking about um, auto land and auto auto taxi and takeoff, isn't it? Um, Airbus have already tested it on a 350 taxi auto taxi and takeoff. It has been tried and tested and proven. guessing what we're talking about there is hands-free um, takeoff we actually posted a video about that a good few years ago now Airbus ch testing that and uh, testing it positively as well. It worked out perfectly. Asking if we can catch a Delta flight. Is that the one lined up right now or close to lining up? DL21. Oh, yeah, there is one up at the um, up at the turn on point. This Ethiopian jet's going to go up like a flipping Richard Branson skyrocket. Poor old Russians could only collide with the moon, didn't manage to put it on there, did they? Here comes the I don't know what it's about yet. 
It's a great livery. It's beautiful, but I don't know what it's about. <laughs> come on, man. You know, come on, BA. You've got a lot of money. You've got some great people working for you. But maybe it's time to sort of like have a word with your ad agency who you're paying millions of pounds to a year. Yeah, oh, it's a nice colour plane, isn't it? What's it about? I bet you are, I bet you if you ask the cabin crew, they'll be like, uh, I don't really know. Here we go, watch this folks. This is gonna go up quick. Empty, I think. Where's she going to now? Leipzig or something. She might not be empty. Elsewhere, I think she is carrying a bit of weight still. Yeah. Quite a uh, derated departure, though. A flexi, as um, some pilots would call it, a flex departure. Off to Oslo. So, um, obviously, doing the rounds, I'd imagine. A bit like a DPD van, isn't it? At least I don't leave a flipping note. Sorry, our driver missed you today. Oh, I was in! You You weren't in. Yes, I was. Tell me I wasn't in. Oh, nice seven six. Good old Smokey Joe. Jenny McDermott BA297 on its way out. This is the Delta jet turning on now, GP. Oh, listen to this. Junky monkey. Shane, there's some um, some great uh, some great chat and um, questions being asked by subscribers, which obviously 
I am committed to um, reading out my members uh, chat but some great questions and discussion points coming from subscribers uh, of course if you come on it would be great to discuss that kind of thing with you aviation chat that is Alex Thomas missed the RB two eleven. Oh my goodness me! Imagine if we were on this position and we had all those jumbo jets lined up down the end of the runway like we used to. We can but reminisce and think of those old times. A Saudi a dream. What's that? Shelly, what to say? Sorry? Sepulveda. Is it Sepulveda? I don't think it is. Sepulveda's in um, LAX. Question, who's the oldest engine manufacturer? General Electric didn't produce engines. Um, don't think that was their first MO. Rolls-Royce um, was obviously cars, wasn't it, initially, I think. Then went into producing uh, car engines, and then obviously... Um, nice, look at this, 339. Very old. It's some old weather, is it? Well, what I was going to say was that this position has a bit of a Sepulveda feel about it, doesn't it? But uh, Sepulveda, you've got a big, great big power station right there and a load of bushes and trees and stuff, and you only get it um, to a certain point. Um, but it has that same sort of like feel about it. is a bit of 380 action folks Bobby Fitzsimmons Safran interesting I know that Safran have a very big part play a very big part with Airbus uh, in terms of uh, engine componentry and um, in terms of like an engine manufacturer, I have to look back at that. Robert Kinnett Supermarine, 
supermarine were uh, manufacturers of this Spitfire one. Ellis Chernoff, Curtis Wright engines were early in the game of radials. Yes, the Wright. Um, that was on the DC3, wasn't it? The Curtis Wright radials and uh, other earlier development engines. Um, but in terms of the, yeah, I'm guessing there were probably mergers along the way as well. And, uh, anyway, 330, climb up and away and out and over to you, big lad. Fire it up. Alex Thomas, uh, for a triple seven three hundred EM, climbing out on one engine is hard, hence the largest fan diameter and rated power in the world. Uh, though I think the GE NX course surpassed it. Okay, what about the... Um, the uh, XWB, Rolls-Royce XWB, I might have something to say about that, I don't know. size of that horizontal stabiliser on the back of that 380, mate. As wide as the wingspan on a 318, or even a 319, I think. Heavy climb out. Avro Arrow, she's off to Chicago. Thank you, Avro. Miles high. Lycoming, blimey. Never even heard of them. Michael White BMW were early aircraft engine products. Yeah, their blue and white logo is a spinning propeller. Yes, indeed. Um, Michael White um, BMW, I think, um, manufactured engines uh, during the Second World War for uh, their um, some of the um, war planes, the military planes. BMW were involved in the jet engine uh, 262 as well, wasn't it? Or was it the other little, tiny little jet plane that they uh, that they had that was um, didn't have any undercarriage? It's like a whale tail, absolutely. Um, it is Helen, the wonders of engineering. 
this Joseph winding itself up, basking in sunlight. Listen to this. I want to keep um, keep an eye on that um, that QR code, folks. It'll take you to a. Um, I think, Jilly, if you take a screenshot of, shot of it, if you take a screenshot of it, and then oh, the link to the page is also pinned to chat. Another triple seven, sending them out like lanks. Yeah, if you're watching it on your TV, scan the QR code on your phone. Um, it's relevant to people around the world, really, folks. Yeah. Oh, you wait till the autumn, folks. Going to get some amazing overwing um, vortex incredible phenomenon funky shot funky shot funky shot um, yeah I mean at the end of the day uh, you might learn something uh, we might even save a life you never know um, with these things um, and it's of course always uh, great to have uh, the kind of um, figures that we that were released last time we were here 6,000 percent increase in web traffic to the LFB website so surely some listen to this over the wings or is that me just imagining things I'm seeing a little bit of floofage there just on rotate Um, yeah, I guess we can. Uh, okay. All right, folks, just going to put the map up quickly just to give you an idea where we are. You can look around the airfield. Don't look around the eyes, look into the eyes. Uh, and you'll be able to see where we are located in terms of our position at the airport. Uh, let me know when it's up, Jenny, please. Oh, Martin P, ME262 had Yonkers Jumo engines, much like the Heinkel, oh, oh no, no, wasn't it the Jumo engine that was in the uh, Heinkel as well? Very short engine lives because of a lack of access to the required metal alloys, yes indeed. Just heard that Air Lynx are doing a direct flight from Denver to Dublin next year, Roxy Simmons saying that, wow. Okay, so there we go, folks. Um, the map is up and um, that gives you a clear idea of where I am. Uh, you can see the other orange marks there. Um, okay, Ian UPS has just texted me, Jilly. UPS pilot. Uh, take the map down here, please. Okay, I'm just gonna quick... Um, okay, uh, 
Ian UPS. I think this is our man from Anchorage. Uh, G'day, Jerry. Wife, son, and I are on BA 1452 to Ed Edinburgh today, out at 440. Okay, uh, going to celebrate the old man's 80th at the Edinburgh Tattoo. So, um, BA 1452, Jilly, is what we're looking out for, folks. Oh, look at that beautiful bird, man. Isn't she beautiful, man? Look at that wing. That for a wing there, look. 1452 to Edinburgh. Yeah! Go on, Sam! Oh, cool. So this is a good friend of ours, folks. When will I see you again? Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, good friend of ours, uh, Ian. Uh, he's a captain with UPS flying the 747 freighters. Uh, we've uh, met him a couple of times at Anchorage. He's got a float plane, bless you. He's got a float plane. Um, good to hear from you, Ian. Hope you're doing well. A love from everybody here. Miles high, fence wingtips. What are we talking about? 262? There's the, um, the lone ship. Yeah, it's funny, we were talking about Anchorage the other day, just about how, uh, how it is so much like going on safari and finding the, uh, the ultimate watering hole where all the big beasts go and drink. One of the wildlife parks, Mozambique or uh, Nairobi or uh, Nice Funky. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, because that is literally what those 747s, those jets do at, uh, at Anchorage. They feast on fuel and then depart on their own ways. Uh, ask him to, VJ, asking him, yeah, well, VJ, nearer the time. Um, see if he's on left, oh, left or right side, question mark. Let's see what he comes back with there because if he's on the left side and he's taxiing out like this little fella is now. A long way off from uh, coming out yet. Uh, he'll be able to um, flash his light up against the window, won't he? Hey, hey. Not flash his light, but put his, put his torch up against the window. Sue Taylor, good day to you. Mikoto, I'm getting flashbacks to when that happened to me at work, but it was a 737 drop. Would have been significant. I'd fallen out. Which airline are you flying to Miami with Matt and family Adams asking? Virgin Atlantic I'm flying with, and I don't think I'm going to be um, disgusted with the service. <laughs> it's a big old statement to make, isn't it? People are fed up. Are they? Okay. Everyone's fed up, aren't they? <laughs> Richard Groves! Good afternoon to you, sir. Yeah, I had a few lumps and bumps when I came back from um, Anchorage this time. First time, a lot have been bitten by a ton of fleas. But I don't think it was um... <laughs> people still driving past them finding me. Can't hide anywhere, can I? <laughs> Hello. Uh, just saw the BA Troop 7 to LAX head right for me in Maidenhead, Jordan Charlie saying. Sue Taylor flying business over and first back on BA. Ooh. Look at you. I like the 
some, isn't it? Though? It's funny, isn't it? Because half the time, the um, not half the time, but a lot of times when you deep when you're coming off the. Um, Half the time when you're coming off these uh, long haul flights, you have to walk through the. Um, you actually have to walk through the. Oh, funky shot. You have to walk through the business slash first class section. And it's quite funny how uh, the business class section is actually uh, uh, a lot more. Um, <laughs> in a lot more worse state than it is <laughs> than uh, the economy section it's almost as if they're like well you know we're playing first class so we don't have to you know pay that much attention how are they okay oh well we won't get there. i have got a meeting on tuesday Time they're coming back. Phil Sky, good co good point there, Phil. Um, really get a sense of sense of speed um, as the aircraft take off in front of us here. That's good to hear. Um, it is one of those angles where you definitely do get a great sense of speed, and of course, all that is down to. Um, not just the LFB, but John. Um, I won't mention his second name, but John is his name, and he knows who I'm talking about. Thanks, John, mate. Um, what an incredible bloke! It needs to be a. It needs to be, you know, the work he's put into this for us being here, folks. Obviously, it's a joint effort, but you know, um, it is uh, quite, quite remarkable what he's done. on it 14 what was it what was the flight number jenny 14 1452 should we get him to number one got 4400 people watching let's try and get him to number one folks the paupers parade through it first class on the way to my economy seat j mank the paupers parade <laughs> well, you can, um, wow, he's up there. I always remember flying in, um, when I flew Etihad, um, <clears throat> and we had a very, uh, decent option to go business wasn't it Jilly and um, took it up it was a very cheap option last minute I did it at the airport um, but I got yeah yeah it was a 10 hour flight to Tokyo um, but um, what was funny well obviously not that funny but I um, and this is what this is why sometimes aircraft get called uh, uh, taken off the flight line and end up um, going into maintenance, folks. It's, it's purely for a, a reason like what I've just, what I'm just about to tell you. Uh, during my sleep, I obviously had a bottle of water, and I got it sort of. Um, what's that? And I rested it behind me, and it fell down behind the seat. You know, the seat that slides up and down. I couldn't get it out, and I completely forgot about it. Next thing I knew was I went to put the seat back up. I went to put the seat back up, and the best way to describe it is a bit like the old um, dustbin lorry with the crusher in it. Um, it's sort of like got a funky shot. It got stuck behind the seat. Um, so there's a good possibility that that seat did not go down flat next time. It was, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> 
Brian Stewart. I think he was a starter. It certainly sounded like it, didn't it? If we hear another one, that will mean it was. Oh! Was it that Dreamliner there, possibly? I don't think you get a sort of like. It sounded more GE ish, didn't it? Mikoto can't take my eyes off that open door on the 380 and start what it's done. Planes without the APU on heat fast in the sun. Yes, indeed. Oh, listen to these winding up. Trent 7000s. Super duper bypass ratio. Super twin jet. Oh, he's on the right side at the leading edge, so we won't see him. That's a shame. That's very true. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, 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 yes. It is. Most unfortunate when, um, yeah. Oh, that's a shame, Ian. He's going to be on the other side. Uh, BA 1452 Pop It. It's not on the radar here. Oh, okay. Pop It? Who's Pop It? What's that? <laughs> wow. Matt and Fern. Um, 1900 pounds ex extra foot to Singapore. It's crazy, isn't it? BA 1452 scheduled as G T T N F. Should be T T F N. For now. Still hot in the upper deck of that 380. Matt and Fa Fam. Adams, I was really happy with the economy on the way back though. I was on the 380. There we go, yeah. Nice. Even the little ones from here are good, isn't they? Ted Tours. for aviation uh, won't be live next Saturday unless something specific is uh, uh, generally we're live every Sunday and every Wednesday folks that's our usual um, plan and of course overseas shows as well uh, Miami at the end of next month for first class and super class members and between now and then we will have a European show uh, to bring you folks
1652, due out at 1652. Okay, so a little bit later than expected. be at a premium during um, holiday season, uh, half-term breaks, school holidays, etc, etc. Yeah. Pay a premium if you want to go right in the middle of the summer holidays and all that kind of thing. So, which is interesting because you would have thought that more people fly means selling more tickets therefore it would be cheaper but it's just um, you know they charge what they like really Alex Thomas that uh, upper deck door 26 feet above the ground Correct. now mate you want to be a little bit careful um, flying out there on the uh, even though you look beautiful and graceful you're kind of right in the um, flight path. Like, Don't you worry about it, Sam. I know what I'm doing. I can look after myself. Oh, really? Okay, let me just... Yeah, 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 that's cool. I'll do a restart on it. Nice Turkish 777. I haven't seen that for a little while. show you how to fly son. Look at that wing profile man. It's very Airbus-esque I've got to say. Or I should say the uh, Airbus is very um, kite-esque. Beautiful man, beautiful. Big old wingspan on him look. Just gliding away. Okay. Control feathers at the back there. Look, winglets even. Look, look at the uh, outboard feathers, man. Creating winglets. It's just amazing, isn't it? You've got to say that uh, the majority of um, modern wing design has definitely been um, adopted uh, by looking at um, big birds of prey. Even the crow, even the common crow has an amazing wing on it.
sexy now, actually. Taxing out from T5, copy one of them. a proper screamer. Sack comms blister. Kevin FB. Diesel 1 3. The old United Louis should have been a gold line 767 like the 767. Bryden horizontal stabilizers, which is the um, the rear um, stabilizers, uh, the horizontal section of the empennage. We have the uh, vertical stabilizer, which is the tail fin itself, tail plane, um, and the uh, horizontal stabilizers. Um, what house and um, the uh, elevators are attached to that. Um, but the horizontal stabilizer also has a trim mechanism attached to it as well. Um, generally an auto trim system. It can be trimmed manually if needed, but uh, generally it's uh, something that works behind the scenes, uh, the trim stabilizer. Um, throughout flight. Um, who's that coming from? Andrew Whedon. Uh, why do jets have uh, new nose cones? Good question that, Andrew. Reason being is because obviously the, um, as you can appreciate, the nose of the aircraft is the, uh, is the most susceptible part of uh, the aircraft in terms of potential damage that might occur. Um, you know, you do get bird strikes on the windshield, and uh, is he starting up? He's starting up. Oh, the window's closed on that bird. Uh, yeah. So therefore, you know. of the uh, the nose of an aircraft of these jets is basically made out of a very lightweight material and um, can get damaged quite easily it's not an alloy it's um, it's actually sort of like almost like fiberglass if you if, if you get my meaning um, because it obviously needs to be something that's relatively easy to um, to uh, to hinge and work with but also at the same time uh, it's got a weather radar behind it so 
Uh, very sensitive equipment, but at the same time, I think that 350 did just start our engine because I just got a big waft of um, Jet A1. Um, kerosene is the smell that you're smelling, basically, and my oh my, was that a nice smell. But yeah, so um, the, uh, the nose um, or the ray domes do have to go off for um, repair and servicing as well. It's a serviceable product. So, you know, that is why you see sometimes these aircraft with, um, with a new nose. Uh, sometimes it may be a new nose, but one that's already been painted. Um, but it's a replacement one all the same. And um, you see it quite a lot on the A320s, the BA fleet, when they're slightly out of alignment as well. Craig Hicks BA380 heading your way. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Dean Baker, how do they clean planes? Well, much the same way as they clean windows and anything else in cars and so on. It's big, giant, long squeegees, <laughs> believe it or not. Oh, look at this thing winding up. Qatar's one world trip. Satcom blister is the big lump on the top of it. It's not growth. It's not flea bite. Yeah. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello! Hello mate, what you got? What you got fella? Oh, he's leaving it on the doorstep, good lad. <laughs> Sorry folks, there's somebody at the door. Do, do, do. Oh. So, just looking at that United SAF livery, Jilly. <laughs> I'll take that all. I'll take that all back about. Outside of it. it's, 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 it's what 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 does connecting the world ensuring a better future mean? How does that make it sound like you've you've? Oh, I give up. I just give up. I give up. I give up. I give up. We know what we're doing, Sarah. Don't worry about it. We got it all under control. So I'm not doubting that, man. I'm just thinking, like, you know, what? If 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 you said to somebody, uh, connecting the world, ensuring a better future, what does that say to your average individual on the street? Does it mean that you're does that mean that you're, um, yeah, yeah. Does that mean that you're, but what does it mean, you know, to the average person on the high street? Absolutely sod all. Connecting the world using SAF, sustainable aviation fuel, um, you know, a cleaner climate. Oh, I don't know. I haven't thought long and hard about that, have I? I, I, I hate being negative about anything. 
because I'm always a very positive person. But when I see something like that and I think, you know, who sat around a boardroom? Do they even care? Do they even know what they're talking about? The agency, the ad agency? Because let's face it, at the end of the day, it's, it, well, it might be an internal design team or something like that. I don't know, but it's got nothing on there that says anything about sustainable aviation fuel. It doesn't even say sustainable future. Connecting the world, ensuring a better future. What does that say? Okay. It's terrible. You're coming at it at the wrong angle is the way I look at it. You know, blimey O'Reilly. I'll do it all for you for, 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 for quarter of the cost is what they're, of what you're getting charged, mate. Half these marketing companies, man, I've got to be honest with you, unless they, you know, I've got to be honest with you, people like um, uh, 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 um, Gravity, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing because they are, they are linked very heavily with, uh, with Embraer and uh, have been doing it for so many years that they know where to sort of like tune people. Um, Look at their E2 campaigns in terms of the, you know, mind you, I think that's um, Embraer who have, have basically taken all of that on, isn't it? In terms of the, the liveries and stuff like that. But um, even so, even so. You know, when you, um, when you create a new campaign, don't you go out in the marketplace and test it with people? Don't you do that in general? Don't you go down the high street and sort of like, you know, do a, do a, do a, ask a hundred people and see what they say. <laughs> Rather than, hey, do you like this livery? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. say it until the Pratt & Whitney engine issue is resolved. BA are very happy that they, uh, <laughs> they chose the Leap engine over the Pratt & Whitney. Because of course, um, you know, all their previous engines were IAE engines. They've gone to a completely new engine manufacturer uh, in the Leap engine. Okay, Ian's saying that they're late as usual. <laughs> Supermaster. Panasonic VXF1. A350. Longest range ETOPS engine, the uh, XWB, I think, still holds that record. shiny carbon wing on a it's a shame that they can't uh, run the bare carbon but it is uh, it's it doesn't look the carbon doesn't look like so the fuselage carbon uh, they they basically have to run have to have a, a very well um, finished um, in terms of paintwork uh, because of the ultraviolet rays that massive differences in temperature on the ground and then up in the air from sort of like anything from fall of plus 50 up to um, down to minus 80. Lots of expansion and contraction. It's like 787-10. Going 
long. Beautiful wing on that Dreamliner. Honestly, don't think there is a better one. Of oh, Avro Arrow has just taken the London Fire Brigade safety quiz, and he said that he's not in the UK, but it's a healthy reminder. Thank you, Avro Arrow. Ha <laughs> ha! Great feedback for the boys at LF and girls at LFB, of course. Um, there you go. He's taken the quiz. I don't think they're going to come all the way to Avro Arrow's house in, what is he, Carrington, Canada, isn't he? To fit a fire alarm. <laughs> Fair play, thank you, Avro. Scrotony, white against grey stunning. Yeah, we are, we are. Indeed we are. We're in the prime position for Funkadelic shots. As soon as he comes on radar, folks, it's getting to number one, yeah? BA 1452, 1452. Roxy Simmons just bought, bought a fire blanket and an extinct. I've got an extinguisher in the van. I bought one. I think I bought it on on e, um, on uh, Amazon. You know, like a um, one of those small fire extinguishers. Always good to have something like that with you, folks. Even if it's not for you, it might be to help someone else out if you see them um, on fire. <laughs> You're right, there, mate. <laughs> Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll put you out, sorry. Oh, I've got a fire extinguisher in my van. Hold on a minute, I don't know how to work it. Uh, to pull that, pin that, do that, push that, pull it, push it, pull it. I'm on fire, yeah, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. Pull the, first of all, thank you for buying the, I'm just, I'm just, Rav H, amazing shot. Wow, wow. Getting about on the big Jets, Jordan, Charlie. What is in the same? Got it on Amazon. There we go. Probably under the proviso of, uh, or the recommendation of the London Fire Brigade. I don't know, but uh, always good to have. You never know when you might need it, folks. You never know. Tr your trucking might be able to catch it. 747 overhead GP, shout me. There it is. <laughs> there, I've got it. Stand by. Ah, we're gonna get it. There she is, there she is. It's the retro car galux jet. Oh, yeah. Good call. A bit hazy. You wait till uh, conditions cool down here in the UK. We've got some autumnal arrivals and departures.
shot Sarah Lancaster, Anthony Bam, a nice Brian Stewart, Retro, Alex Thomas, Amy, nice. Oh, that was a start up. This is a start up going to happen now. Uh, unfortunately, Trent powered. I wouldn't say unfortunately, but just in terms of the start up noise, I just got, I just heard the APU. <laughs> Actually, it might have been uh, bleed air going to the start. Saf in it. So had a bit of fire training to work outside. In general, um, awareness is there's nothing more important than um, awareness of um, risks that you might be facing. Some that you might not be aware of as well. Liam G. Just saw one of the jets you watched take off land here in Barcelona. Squoke, what a zoom. It certainly does have a good zoom on it. That's a very old, well, I'd say a very old Finnair 321. Thomas, wow, that one world livery is really classy on the 350. It is, isn't it? It does look good. Aerocentric, still for the old chrome American livery. Aerocentric, I'm 100% with you. Of course, wouldn't you just love to see that back? Just one of their jet lines. Of any luck, when this guy pulls away from his standing position, from that hard standing, he might get a bit of an engine power up from those trends. Let's have a listen. There's a bit of a ramp there. Notice the two fake painted windows on the last upper deck decommissioned. Chernoff, I agree. Astro jet livery. American Airlines, isn't it? Uh, they've still got a... Um, which one is it? Astro jet. 
servicing a, 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 another Shea Oakley post the other day. 737-100 with the uh, retro, well, wasn't a retro livery then, but it was a Jurassic livery. Um, beautiful livery. One of my favourites, got to be honest with you, in terms of any... Uh, right, a couple of, um, apparently, fake... Oh, yeah, OK, so they're painted on, are they? That So that's a fake door, that is, is it? That's interesting, isn't it? That's not actually a door, that last door there. Do what? Um, is it, is it, is it, is it, if, I don't know, a fake windows on the door or, or fake outline of a door? Or is it, um, why would they put fake windows? Well, as in, as in, um, oh, okay, okay. Okay, so decommissioned that door. So there's two fake windows. Yeah, so that is the upper deck. Yeah. That is the upper deck that I'm zooming in on there. Claire Bear, 787, going over the top now. Oh, it's quite clear, Jerry. Oh, the bell is right in the shot. Look at the back. Look, look, look. There, there, mate. Look, there. Lovely clean looking jet that isn't it? Fin air. Ian's pushing back folks. BA 1452, let's get it to number one. Right, I'm going on my uh, flight radar right now. And I am gonna select, click on that uh, on that aircraft and select it. Let's get him to number one folks, 1452. Uh, you say he's pinging on radar, where's he coming out of there? Ah, um. oh, Edinburgh, EDI, there we go. So, uh, Fake windows on a decommissioned door, so so they've sealed that door up, have they? Is what you're saying? Okay, let's just have a look on this uh, 380 here. There's one on the back of the 380 there. Okay, well, um, I don't know. Now I'm confused. Okay, let's get into number one, folks. Here we're looking for um, BA1452 British Airways. Good friend on, uh, of ours on board that aircraft with his family or uh, with his missus going up to Edinburgh to, uh, to meet, um, meet the folks uh, at the uh, Edinburgh Fringe Festival, is it, or something? I don't know. It's, uh, anyway, it's very funny, apparently. Oh, Edinburgh Tattoo, sorry. <laughs> He's going to get a tattoo. He's not, he's not, okay, okay. Dave Beeler, some doors are only emergency escape doors and if they, if opened, they will automatically deploy the slide. Third door and some 757s are only escape doors. Yes, like the smaller doors, the overhead, the overwing doors, the overwing exits are usually uh, a lot smaller. Uh, just enough to get somebody out of um, evacuate um, whereas obviously the access doors are uh, substantially larger 
because they need to accommodate the um, Uh, Andrew Whedon watched a documentary about Air Force One the other day and all planes are required to mark the outline of their doors for emergency access. The only plane not to do this is Air Force One. Yeah, uh, that's something that I've noticed um, over the last, um, over the last, well, certainly over the period of time that we've been doing Big Jet TV. As well as that, some of the uh, cockpit windows as well have an outlined um, segment on them, I've noticed. Seven, six, seven. We're going to get a start up. That's a motorcycle. Definitely going to get funky with this. Here we go. Keep climbing, baby. Keep climbing. Two American triple seven threes. Number four is that fourteen fifty two opposite me, GP. What's going on right now? There's Ian. He's on the other side of the jet, unfortunately, folks. And now for your delectable delight.
up, folks. One last push button, folks. 1452 on Flight Radar 24. Let's do it right now. Get that guy to number one. Do it for our friend Ian, UPS 747 freighter pilot. Uh, flies the 747-8. It's dropping. Bring it back, bring it back. Stand clear. <laughs> Give me some. Stand clear. <laughs> not responding, sir, he's not responding. Right, give me another five milligrams. Stand clear. I got a heartbeat. I got a heartbeat. Here we go. I don't know. I don't know. I can't see. I can't see. Uh, no, it's not. It's not him. Where is he then? Is this him here? That's a 321, is it? No, that wasn't him, folks. Oh, look at that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, 320, you said 321. <laughs> yes. That's him, folks. Okay. That's the one we want, folks. November Fox Trots, what we want. <laughs> number three, she's number three. It's looking good, sir, it's looking good. Okay, you can remove the drips now, remove the drips. Oh, listen to that. Come on. It's number two. <laughs> Come on, folks. At least he's flying on a Neo. That's good, isn't it? So, yes, sir. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Ian's going to have some pretty big hardware up his backside, isn't he, look? And this big lad here and all. Big smile on his face. Look, keep it at number one, folks, even though I'm not looking at it. Keep it at number one. <laughs> this is not him, I repeat. This is not him. I'm just filming it, OK? It's not the aircraft, ladies and gentlemen. It's an intruder. There he is. You around the world are watching that plane right now on flight radar. You see him tracking up the taxiway. Um, he's third of that set. Well, actually, there's, a, there's one already on the runway. Um, he's third in line to go out by the looks of it. Uh, Penny Haskins Emirates just flown over her house. There we go. Interestingly enough, that Emirates jet is uh, making a left turn, quite interestingly. Um, BA1452, folks, that's what we were looking for. Not this, not this bird of prey. What are you doing? Okay, 564 more people to get that, to get Ian to number one, folks. Come on. What are you messing around with? Uh, Aviation Louis, uh, yeah, I think you might have joined on the part of the chat where I was mistaken that that was his jet. It was not his jet. Um, 
Now he's uh, he's just ahead of the wing leading edge on the right hand side. So we won't get to see him, I don't think. Um, let me just see if I can. I'm telling him now, folks, we're trying to get him to number one, and I've also told him to put his phone uh, up against the window on rollout, because this is about, we might be able to get to see him. Oh! You beautiful thing. Yeah! Rolls-Royce power right there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 1452, 1452. Now, I told him he's probably following uh, procedures and got his phone on uh, flight mode, I'd imagine. Because he hasn't received that. It hasn't gone blue. You need that jet at number one, folks. There is your challenge for today. Look at the state of that. Look at the state of that. Wow. You can see every outline of everything there, can't you? Regardless of... Uh... When you clean a plane, it doesn't take very long for them to... Uh start to show their grabbiness. Miles high, we just need 300 more for first place, folks. Come on! <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. All the fun of the fair. Uh, also, Joe, what's going on with that United 767 at the BA maintenance hangar, Aviation Louis asking. Uh, she's just done having maintenance done. Uh, Aviation Louis. Not our plane, not our plane, I repeat, not our plane. She's number one, folks, well done. We got it at number one. Ha ha ha! You folks are just fantastic, aren't you? Uh, watching all around the world, folks, a UPS um, 747 captain uh, on board that plane with his wife, heading to Edinburgh. Uh, we made it at number one. I'm just telling him now, folks. What's the timestamp, GP? Oh, ha, ha, ha. What, what, what on the clock on the stream? Okay. Oh, no, no, what's the clock, what's the number, what's the time on the clock on the screen? Okay. So, forward leading edge C. We will get to see him, we will get to see him, but he won't. <laughs> Is this him now? No, no, this is a CO, isn't it? Neos, uh, there he is, there he is. Okay, let's see if we can get him.
show. Captain Ian, ladies and gentlemen. UPS. Not flying the jet. that Neo um, okay let's see if we can let's see if we can see him looking out the window <laughs> okay it's not an easy job zooming in on a leading edge seat There you go, folks. Well done, everyone. Off that bro. for something heavier. Big old clunky doors on the 350. You really do hear and feel them shut. And the nose gear as well. Yeah, Morrison, gorgeous 350. LA girl, gorgeous is that Ruby Tuesday. J Mank. See what I mean about the bird of prey wing profile, folks, on the Airbus? Have some of this. Let's do some milestones um, just before that. Ronald with Wings, thank you. Ronald with Wings, once again, another five memberships gifted. Gentlemen, sir, gentlemen. Gonna do some, um, gonna do a quick one minute of, um, milestones, folks. Reading out people who've been with us for, uh, however long they've been with us, whether it be a week, whether it be five years, or however long it might be. Alex Thomas, there goes the, be um, the beast. Somebody saying now BA1452 will fly past me on the descent to Edinburgh. I will look out for it. Thank you very much. Uh, best change your name, my friend, because uh, otherwise I can't read out the first part of that, I'm afraid. Uh, Jackie David uh, is a four striper, been a member for 19 months. 
as a first class member. Uh, Disney Dave, member for 37 months. Uh, Nemsky, 27, member for 38 months. Trish, 58 months. Oh, it's Biggles Aviation, was it? Oh, I do apologise, so don't change your name. Aviation, Biggles Aviation. I thought it said something. I know my eyes are old, my nose is bent and my ears are old and drizzled, but anyway, uh, sorry. Eddie, member for 18 months. Melanie, a member for 31 months. Duncan Butcher, 19 months. H, 17 months. Wow, uh, you guys are great. Amanda Robson, 16 months. JF, 840, gifted a membership. Brian Pounder, a member for 32 months. Uh, Amy, member for 12 months. Amy with a Y, Aerocentric, member for 17 months. Dean P, member for 29 months. Wow, Yvonne Evans, love this show. Thank you, Yvonne. Another 380 car now, now. Kerry Ann Davies, a member for 43 months. <laughs> That's very funny, I like that. A Sabira, member for nine months. A Rachel West, 32 months. Did I miss somebody there? Brian Stewart. Uh, 52 months, wow. Uh, it's all too much, I can't handle it. Um, Panaka, 34 months. Uh, Helen Clapp, member for 10 months. Uh, Eve Hosgood, 42 months, member for 14 months. Diane, 78. Wow, you guys uh, rock and roll, really, don't you, eh? Um, crazy. Bruce Campbell. Bruce here, member for 20 months. Scottish, I don't know, um, but there we go. Uh, Uncle Pat, 28 months. Uncle Pat, Max Thompson, uh, 37 months. Vera has gifted a membership. Thanks, Vera. Uh, hold off, folks. I'm just going to get this 380. Pause it, GP. Can you pause it? Cut it, GP, because <laughs> I'll scroll back, I'll scroll back and uh, read them out. Ain't it? I would never join a club that would have me as a member. But if you join a club, you're a member of a club, aren't you? For God's sake. Anyway, whatever. Okay, let's. Um, some very miserable people in this world, aren't there? Proper miserable sods, aren't they? Good luck with it, mate. You just enjoy sitting there on your own festering in your own miserable life. Um, right, here we go then. Bruce Campbell, member for 20, or was it 30? No, 20 months. Uh, we've got Uncle Pat, Max Thompson, Vera. Um, uh, Rob Duff, a member for 43 months. Stand by, folks. I can't pause it, can I? Say. If you pink feet, put your finger on chat, the white screen comes up with um, go to channel, report, replace. Can't do that, mate. You can't do that. Oh, I know that, man, but you can't stop it from moving. Okay, okay. 
mate. I, I, honestly, it doesn't work, mate. Panaka, Helen Clapp, Eve Hosgood. Um, we got Diane 78. I'm, I'm trying to catch up with these things, but I can't, I can't. Rob Duff, um, GBYA, a member for 27 months. Harry Flatters, uh, a member for 53 months. Nick Irvine, 17 months. Uh, David Lewis, 43 months. <sighs> trying to... No, don't, 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 don't. Ian Morrison, member for 40, uh, 31 months. Paul Skilling, member for 49 months. Uh, Nicola W, sorry that I can't read your comments out, folk. Member for eight months. Uh, Omid, upgraded to first class membership. Thank you, Omid ATL. Michael White, member for nine months. Nice titty tat. Uh, Carol Crozier, member for 31 months. James the Drummer, 11 months. No, it's all right, man. I've got it. I'm just trying to stop it, Jilly. You can't stop it, mate. I'm telling you now, John Grillen, BA380, uh, member for one month. Ted Tours, member for five months. Klein, member for three months. We've got Dennis Brennan, member for 16 months. Rab, a member for nine, uh, 39 months. Cashier number four, please, member for one month. Andreas Krugel, member for 38 months. Phil Sky, 41 months. Uh, Tim Rotunda, 12 months. Uh, Lucy McCluskey, 7 months. Blimey O'Reilly, when are we going to get to the bottom of this? Deb Butler, 12 months. Um, Gail, uh, Jill Hale, sorry. <laughs> Sounds like Gail. Member for 27 months. Graham Hatch, 19 months. Uh, Nigel Oliver, 7 months. Um, Andy Edgington, uh, a member for 7 months. Jackie Lyon, 57 months. Lucy Martin, 31 months. Uh, Jeffa Zook, uh, welcome to first class as a brand new member. Jeffa Zook. Jeffa's UK, I think that is, sorry. Jeffa's UK, Jeffa Zook. <laughs> the same, baby. Oh, nice um, whiff of Jet A1. Maybe coming from that Cafe 350. He's going to push it all the way back. It's interesting. Read faster, Jerry. Jesus, it's <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> uh, Johnny Burr, Philip Lowry, Melody. I'm going on to my three years this month time. GN Man 37. Is that my uh, start-up five, five street base? Owen Merrick, Philip Lowry, Ian Morrison. Uh, yes, a very warm welcome. Four months, 20 days for Hayabusa Nata. Okay, interesting. Okay, that's, uh, I think I know if that is starting up, is it? Starting up? Robert Hilton, member for eight months. Just popped in there, great rants today, thank you. Looks like they're getting ready to tow the big route again. Okay, yeah, doors closed, yeah. Phil Sky, thank you, Margaret Burnett. Love our shows, totally manic, there we go. They are our shows, they are your shows, shows ladies and gentlemen. This, uh, this whole channel. Uh, all you wonderful members out there, you are the fuel that fires this channel. Ready on fire! Sorry. Steve Jeff, 36 maths as a non-member. Two and a half years as first class member. Thank you, uh, Steve Jeff. 36 months as a non-member, two and a half years as first class member. Wow, Steve, thank you. I remember the membership chat only works once a month, uh, Bob Shell. Um, the membership chat, yeah, one, the membership milestones are once per month, but trust me, we've got enough members to fill it up every time we do it. It's a bit manic, isn't it? I need to sort of like um, maybe uh, pump myself up with um, nitrogen or something before I do it. <laughs> or be ready for it. Because I wasn't then. <laughs> no, 
No, I wouldn't, because then it would be far too quick. Then I wouldn't, because I can't stop the chap, Liam Bide. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we could try it, but good luck with that. Yes, 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 we could, we could. That's what, yeah, that's what we're going to do next time, folks. We'll put it on member-only chat um, during that particular while we do the milestones only briefly and then we'll turn the uh, all chat on subscriber and member chat um, subscriber and member chat but member only readouts if you know what I mean Avro Arrow quick Red Bull before the next readout and I feel like I just got home and I feel Liam Bide as a new member. <laughs> I should do that really shitty, shouldn't I? Or is it a little bit shady? Thank you, Liam. Good morning, good, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, my friend. Welcome to Big Jet TV as a brand spanking new member. And Animkin Skywalker. Good day to you, Animkin. Wow, big old flare coming off that engine, uh, off that wing. Miles high. Three years, 11 months, and 30 days. Wow, it's already counting there. And Mkin just joined as a member all the way from. Would love a welcome. There we go, and Mkin. Starting up. On the move. Yeah, how about that, folks? There's an example of, um, you know, starting the number two engine when they are actually uh, still making their way to the to the runway to departure. Uh, saves a bucket load of fuel over a, over a, over a year, folks. An absolute bucket load. Husky dog, Captain Ian, just passing overhead in Nottingham. LCY pool, four years, two months, six days. And Nimkins all the way from High Wycombe. Great place, just up the road. Beautiful part of the world. Where Bomber Command were based. Um, Harris and his men based up at High Wycombe. Still there. His office is still there. They reaped the wind. Yeah, Benny boy. Beautiful. 
poetry in it. Poetry, emotion, What's that? be pretty cool. We'll have to get in touch with our uh, Emirati people, won't we? It might be done behind closed doors, if you know what I mean. It won't be done at, uh, it won't be done at Dubai, do, you know, uh, the usual, it'll be done down the road at the other one, won't it? At the testing grounds. Um, probably, uh, She blinded me with science! Doom, 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 doom. Another one coming out. Another big lad. Philip Larry, I picked up cabin crew this morning in Glasgow. She is working BA49 Heathrow to Seattle. I think her name is Kate. There we go. BA49 to Seattle. Where is it? Where, 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 when, what, why, how? Do, 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 do. Uh, Mark Sanderson, do we think the Triple Tyrannus will ever become Smokey Jones? Well, not really. Uh, you're talking about the just overall age of them. I mean, um, Sam 67 has, has its name because of the old Pratt and Whitney engines. Or, um, generally, what power the, uh, Simon Willoughby, best part of, oh, okay, okay, I had no idea, okay. Oh, okay, okay. It's not clearly Jerry wasn't a fan. It's just I didn't see that particular movie. Of course, I love the, uh, I love the Marx Brothers, man. It's not like I don't know every flipping word from every pleading. Love the Marx Brothers. I had no idea. If you had to put a quote from Marx Brothers, Brothers at the end of it, I would have been like, oh, okay, I've got you, I've got you. Yeah, 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 or a wink or something like that. Yeah. Just a little sort of like, you know, just a little uh, wink or a, you know, laughing face or something like that. Um, just a comment obviously threw me out a little bit, so my apologies for that, but uh, yeah. I loved, uh, loved Grant Joe Marx and the, uh, and the, especially the one who always got it wrong, you know, the blonde haired one. He was deaf and dumb, wasn't he? Wasn't he deaf and dumb? Mo, was it Mo? Uncle Pay. Mrs. Bookwood. Uh, Mrs. Bookwood, sorry. Hello, Mrs. Bookwood, and a very warm welcome to Big Jet TV. Lovely to see you. They've got a uh, truck hooked up to that uh, big roo. Looks like they have. Roo and Air's jet. Obviously being um, ready for. Uh, a flight at some point in the future tonight. Uh, Margaret Byrne and Dave H. Harpo, that was it.
perhaps, maybe. Ty, you're a generous man, as is everybody else gifting 10 memberships. Thank you so much, Ty. Giving a shout out to Mrs. Bookwood. And Susan Gerrard is a brand spanking new member. Very warm welcome to you, Susan. Listen to that. Yeah, well, it is, uh, it is questionable what is the uh, preferred sort of like um, part of flight. You know, I love the, uh, I love the pushback and taxi and all that sort of like stuff associated. All that stuff associated with going, flying, you know. Um, especially if you're sitting on the right side of the aircraft sitting in the middle of the aircraft it's always a little bit sort of like you know glancing over to the left glancing over to the right looking at the people sitting in the window who are just reading a book and not even looking out the window and you're thinking what are you sitting in the window for <laughs> or got the blinds down not interested at all in what's going on outside it's a great big dirty wing outside there mate with lots of moving parts and engines and cool pieces to look at and you've got your head buried in a book you've got eight hours to do that man <laughs> appreciate the beauty of the machine that you're flying on at least no not interested look at this handsome aeroplane it's handsome <laughs> Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. best to you my friend take care good night sleep tight sweet dreams roxy simmons oh yeah roxy simmons you're right i i kind of agree with you there it depends for me um whether i'm coming back or going out because i don't generally like to arrive somewhere with um you know with a sort of like you know um I find, generally find that drinking alcohol on an aeroplane or drinking at the airport and then getting on the plane, la 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 la, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, just because it makes me feel a bit dehydrated. It's got every light possible illuminated on that plane, I think. Has he or not? trouble is if they don't sell alcohol on planes people will just load themselves up in the airport and they so it's got more chance of people getting on the plane half cut that's the problem um, it's when they stop serving alcohol at airports and um, go the full nine yards the full nine yards anybody know what that is that saying where that comes from give him the full nine yards I do comes from um, the the clip of the ammunition belt of um, 
of either a Mustang, P51 or whatever it was, was, or maybe a B52, B17 waste gunner or something like that, uh, was nine yards long. Uh, and when it says give him the full nine yards, that means give him, you know, fire every bleeding bullet you can at him. Um, 20 caliber or something like that. Owen Merrick had a beer on board once, felt like a dried out shoe. It's about right, you know. East wind, nine yards is the traditional amount of fabric for a kit. Is it? Yeah, I don't like it. Mate. Yeah, honestly, dry everything. He don't sleep well either. Anyway, whatever. Something to do with baseball, David Beeson. A Roxy Simmons. If the length of the strip was nine yards. Uh, Eve Hosker, yes, it does. It definitely does, Ding Nigel. It definitely does. There's no doubt about it. It's it depends on your metabolism, doesn't it? Uh, as to how much you can take. Great reg on the 380, LEG on the nose wheel mirrors. Always have a few beers on the flight, then when I get to my destination, my drives. Okay, Matt and family Adams. Seen a few A380s today, John Grinham. Nobody seems to remember that flying dehydrated you, Margaret Barnett. Uh, the bullets for the machine guns used in American combat planes in World War II and since were in chains 27 feet in length. There we go, Don Gutzman. Nine yards of length of World War I Vickers machine gun belt. There we go. Uh, the bullets for the machine guns used in American combat planes in World War II nine yards i was right i was right um alan mcdermott giving a shout out to whomever uh, gifted him membership thank you for coming on and saying that alan yes if you have been um if you have been granted a membership folks and gifted a membership please come in and say thank you to whomever um or just to say thank you anyway Some people call that a poor man's 350. Um, I see it as a, another option that um, Airbus offer, rather than developing an all new airliner, why not continue with the same platform um, and just uh, modernize it, give it a facelift, sling a set of new engines on her, more improved wing as well of course she uh, no longer sports the wing of the 330 which originally wow oh they're starting to they're starting to fuzz up now the engine intakes starting to get a little bit of um cloud build up in the intakes there you go you see oh, it's going at it this one floats off the ground, that 350. That set a few alarms off as well. Noisy girl, she's going up quite high. set of treads.
is all the might be a bit of a floofage action here. It depends on the Watch the um, watch the engine intakes, folks, as he powers or she powers up this jet. Oh, we've Hoskard, yeah. I I can sympathise with you there. Being on a flight on a bleeding easy jet with a stag do on it. Oh my God. I, I, you know what? If that was me. I don't know. Um, it's, 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 haven't you got some kind of recall? Go to the airline and say, mate, you know what? This lot here are absolutely slaughtered. Are you going to let them on the plane? And if you are, can you put me on another one? Because I refuse to travel on that plane with a load of drunkards on it. Because there's no way that those those a stag do though oh my god a stag do oh flipping heck no no I thought so. sorry yeah absolutely a stag do not a chance mate Rick Rashid 40,000 pounds of thrust this thing is going to be ingesting over a ton of air every second. Any moment now when those wing lights come on. Are they on? I think they're on. Clear takeoff. 2-7 right. Winds are. Um, let's just have a look. I think they're gone. Runway inspection. Maybe a uh, piece of foreign object debris uh, being reported. On the wrong way. Maybe a um, unfortunate piece of wildlife has uh, met its demise. Miles High gifted another five Big Jet TV memberships. Thanks, Miles. Thank you so much. Of, uh, of um, you know, disagreements on board aeroplanes. Just a bleeding nightmare, isn't it? Check or something or other, these guys. Wow, it's a full, uh, full inspection as well, isn't it? If you're on a train, you can't you move if you're on a train. But uh, yeah, I know you shouldn't have to, should you? you don't, generally, uh, if you're a <laughs> football match, you can't have nothing you can do about football fans, can you? They're all just, um, not all of them, of course, coming back with his son. 
Okay, here we go, ready for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, should I say. Wind up those big XWBs. Runway is clear, sir or madam. Watch the engine intakes, folks. Early birdie. Not so driving all that fast, early birdie, but uh, trust me, when you know what you're looking for, you see it. Um, like I say, these, uh, the runway is a very sterile environment. So any object whatsoever on the runway uh, is going to become a, um, even a dead sparrow or a, or a dead mouse or something like that is going to become notice. I mean, you see it on the road, don't you? When you're driving on the road, you see a, um, a dead bird or, a, or a, you know. So the pilot um, that superseded that aircraft um, has reported back to say that this is a Dash 8 um, 339. A 338 really, isn't it? A 330-8, isn't it? Nice eater livery coming out now. Uh, Alan Robbins, 747 overfly west to east UPS from Louisville. Um, Overflow west to east. Okay. Um, am I going to miss that or am I going to get that? From Lureville. Okay. Sort of south. Airbus operator uh, Eater is um, planning to be eventually. I don't know, are Eater still operating their 777s? 
in the old um, Alitalia livery. There she is, mate. There she is. It's an old 400, isn't it? Look, is that a 400? I think it is. Looking, looking at it. Looking at the size of the engines and the length of her. Wow. Thank you for that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Chrissy, loving the shade of blue on Eta. Avro Arrow, thank you. John Grinham, 747. Claire Bear. Good afternoon, everyone. Peter Mukunda. Good afternoon to you. Phil Sky, UPS 747 400. Mars High. Wow. Love that blue. Um, looks like Estoril blue on a 97 M3. I used to have Alex Thompson. Right, there we go. Estoril blue. Uh, Roxy Simmons, does anyone know why uh, airlines switch out types of aircraft? For example, BA London Heathrow to Denver was a dreamline and now they've changed it to a 350. Well, Roxy, that's just generally down to availability of aircraft. Uh, the original aircraft that was, was on the schedule may have uh, uh, gone to maintenance. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's nice. Um, it may be uh, somewhere else in the world and unable to fly or... Uh, you know, um, not able to meet its requirements. It's a number of different reasons. Why and why? Yeah, that's why sometimes you'll see, we've had it many, many times. Started out as a 787 and ended up as a A330 or something like that with Virgin Atlantic. Happens all the time. And generally it is because of uh, Availability of aircraft and uh, maybe even availabil availability of crew as well. What's that, GP? It's a major generator that's gone down then, isn't it? Or, um, you know, power station of some sort. I remember when the telephone exchange blew up in Mayfield when I was a kid, uh, when I was at school. Woke us all up. Fitzsimmons, bit of a mare at the moment, power cut to entire airport and rail line suspended due to cut Stansted Airport, so yeah, emergency generators and all that sort of stuff on it. Why not? Big shout out to Green Watch. Sitting downstairs. Well, walking around doing, I don't know, but you know, anyway, big shout out to Green Watch here at the LFP on uh, on 
call today. Hit that QR code, folks, if you want to uh, do a little home check. Competition. It's not competition, is it? So, yeah. safe your home is. Who was it earlier on said that they are based on the off the back of the um, the questionnaire on um, on the QR code with the LFB bought a fire blanket and a what was it? An extinguisher on Roxy Simmons that was it. Fire fire extinguisher and a uh, fire blanket. Brilliant, brilliant. It's gonna be nice and warm tonight. Not that time a blanket, you. <laughs> Straight ahead, flying building. You're right. watching BA1452 now on descent and get a photo Biggles Aviation <laughs> sorry Biggles Aviation I know I uh, said earlier on changing that because I thought it said something else <laughs> just set flying building it is more or less uh, HGC BA293 that's number seven on flight radar 24 now uh, wow sh shot moments now beautiful climb out shot jerry hgc lucy martin fabulous shot so that will be no doubt i'd imagine um westbound Flexophonic. Look at this wing. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Just ask Jelly, just ask, just just go on to um, Google, go road, um, go to um, uh, normal. I think it's minus 10. Gary Boats loving the new location. Thanks, Gary. Thank, uh, don't thank me. Thank the. Uh, who's not thanking me? <laughs> Royal Brunei's daily service. Stu, do you know a military tanker pumps out pumps more gas in eight minutes than a regular land based gas station pumps in 24 hours wow yeah it kind of has to doesn't it it's like that high speed um system much like the um formula one cars and stuff like that any type of refueling that's needed quickly Because if, uh, if you pumped gas at the normal rate of an average fuel pump at a gas station, the bleeding plane that's refueling it would run out of fuel. <laughs> Blimey, you still there? You've only got 15 gallons so far. 
Oh, all right. <laughs> I wanted 100 tons. Got him four star. Alan Robbins, uh, Virgin's Penny Lane, off to LAX. Uh, vol following Boeing 747 departing soon, Jerry? No, you won't get any UPS 747s here, Rick. Uh, we saw one over the top just now uh, from Louisville. Um, here's our uh, Vietnam jet, which is, uh, as LA girl calls it, the uh, teal, which is a perfect, it's almost, almost like bamboo in a funny sort of way, the finish. But in the meantime, is this Uzbekistan jet, which is a uh, a real cacophony of pastels, and I love it. Shredderhead. Koto. Once can change the aircraft type they fly if the airline is willing and after appropriate training and testing for the new type. Yes, every pilot has to be type rated on an aircraft. You can't turn up to fly a 777 and end up flying a 330 unless he or she is type rated for this particular for Clonk! Good day to you. Named after a BA350 undercarriage doors. Oh, interesting. Zero, eh? Too much, too little. Sorry about it, Dan. Sorry, folks. No. Can get distorty, mate, if you do that. By the way, folks, we did put a post out yesterday. If you are approached by anybody, I don't care who they say they are, um, can we just ask that, first of all, you take screenshots of that person? Um, if it comes from somebody um, posing as uh, somebody who is um, sort of like looking for editorial or anything like that with Big Jet TV, they are, they are scammers, ladies and gents. It's as simple as that. Let us know at contact at bigjet.tv if you want, if you've been approached. We've had a couple of people already say they have been. We know of one person who's, um, who in the past uh, has been a scammer. He's a, he's a convicted criminal. His name is Simon. Um, wow, look at this thing go. Apologies to any Simon Davy out there who's uh, who's a completely innocent party in all this, but uh, Simon Davy, who has a company called Simon Scribes um, Limited, uh, believe it or not, we've also found out uh, through our research that he's registered that at a church, <laughs> which we're going to find out about. Uh, we're doing a little bit more deep research into him 
because he's a he's a scammer and he's a nasty piece of work so if you are approached by anybody who's um saying that they are uh they can pay uh money to you for writing an article or anything like that it's uh, it's a scam ladies and gentlemen don't get hooked in don't give anyone anybody's your details wow Starting to hook up the uh, wow! Look at the speed this thing's going, man. Uh, they're starting to cloud up inside those engines, those engine intakes. Yeah, his uh, Simon Davy is his name, and um, he's uh, he's linked to uh, Simon Scribes. Exactly spelt exactly as it sounds. Oh. Start up. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Wait. Oh, hello. Hi, Nat. It's that Cafe Pacific starting up, isn't it? Really? How did he come to meet him? JF840. He's uh, in lightness. Contact at bigjet.tv if you've got any information on that uh, scumbag. We're going to do him one day, folks. We're going to make sure he gets what's coming to him in terms of the jail sentence, that is. There's many more things that I'd like to do to him, but that would be illegal. The trouble with things like that is uh, they, don't, they don't come to much anyway. Um, and you'll probably end up being the one that gets into trouble. So the best thing to do is uh, do, do go about it in the right chant on the right channels. And um, we're going to be uh, hopefully putting that bloke in jail once again. Scamming, just 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 to put you in the picture of the kind of nastiness that he is. You know, a couple who were grieving for their child who who unfortunately died. Um, he set up a. Um, a charity foundation for them took 300 quid off them and went on his merry way so uh and that's what he went to, he, he did uh, how long did he do in jail for that jilly six six months or something oh two much two years good and that didn't make him think blimey o'reilly um yeah he has served time twice folks He's done bird twice and he hasn't learned his lesson. Um, and I know what you would want to do to somebody who doesn't learn his lesson. Um, anyway. Anyway. I don't know, George, because um, I don't know what fair that is. <laughs> Anything that's sort of like where you get in trouble with the authorities, even though they might, um, they might, uh, you know, sympathise with you. See right through these uh, flight decks now, with the sun beaming down straight into the flight deck. Yeah. Hi, 
it was the Cathay Triple. He's a noisy, noisy, noisy triple, aren't ya? Oh, yeah, I see ya. Oh, trust me, Roxy. We've already uh, we've already uh, uh, um, experienced the uh, spiteful behaviour of the individual that he is. Can't people just be nice? Yeah, Paul, we're just, warn we're just warning people because we've had it from uh, aviation, people in the aviation industry. Uh, so it is related. And uh, any opportunity, uh, as we have quite a big reach globally, and uh, trust me, this, this individual will not stop at the borders of the UK. Um, he, uh, it's, it's related to uh, people in the industry, in the aviation sector who are being, um, who his focus is on. So therefore it is worth doing that. Smoking five door triple back cafe tie say yes. It's a big old girl this year. See, at this moment in time, that smile is more a sort of like a hmm, but it becomes more of a smile as it passes. Bon winter. 29th, my wife and I will be flying into Heathrow on Delta for our first visit to England. Going to visit London and my mum's hometown in Shrewsbury. Awesome! What a lovely time. Take your time and enjoy. Definitely London, um, in terms of places to visit. Steeped in history, London, of course. Talk, talk about smoking jugs. There's a smoker right here. It's a smirk. It was a bit of a smirk, wasn't it? I tell you what, it's a smile now. Ha! <laughs> yeah, smile in your head. Conditions of cooling ever so slightly and as a result you're getting this ingestion of, uh, of moisture into the engine intakes Somebody saying earlier on they're getting fed up with that barcode thing. Well, the bottom line is, mate, if, you, if we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for us doing a deal like that with these guys, you know? And we're not only that, but you might be getting fed up with it, but we could be potentially saving lives here, you know? It's not like I'm forcing it down your throat. Oh, did it? Okay, right, okay. Okay, right. Oh, okay, I apologise then in that case. Yeah, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, at the end of the day, it is something that you need to 
think about maybe the best. What's that GP? <laughs> if I've got a platform to be able to warn people about uh, potential okay All right. I know JK is that a GE90 uh, Alex Thomas uh, Deb Butler you're absolutely right they are very very clever you need to be very very careful and um, you know Um, you, know, you get an email from someone you know, I don't know what it's about saying that you know it's uh, you've got a invoice overdue or you've got credit here or uh, whatever it might be if you're unfamiliar with it the best thing you can do is, is delete it don't open it don't respond if you respond that's it bang they've got you EK3 number two HGC. Oh! Alan Q looks like the M25. <laughs> it does look at that, man. And the BA tail and the United tail facing the opposite direction. They're actually at maintenance at the moment, but even so, still a great cacophony. Uh, a, a, a quick glance would make you think that's a Ryanair jet in the middle of that, wouldn't it? But uh, it ain't. Um, last 747 I flew was Virgin. It was called Extreme. It was called Extreme Turbulence. She had a head. Marco Gold. Have your wits about it, haven't you? Um, very nasty, very nasty people in this world. They all deserve to be punished. Pico 7, yeah, that is Aerostana. Indeed it is. You're absolutely right. Kenya, Dreamliner. John Grinham loves the Aerostana 321. Uh, used to be their 757, folks, when we started Big Jet TV. This was a 757, this service now with a 321 with another new replacement ray dome it's an old jet probably leased I'd imagine oh no it's Brussels sorry <laughs> No 
yellow icon jet today for the uh, for the Brussels gang. Beautiful one, Worlds 350 lining up. Yeah, it is a Neo 321 Neo with Aristana. Beautiful airline. Tyler Burbank. So Cruz loves the Frontier livery, the birds and the animal logo. Yeah, we love the Frontier livery. We'll be getting a few of them at Miami, won't we? Hey! Singapore baby slinger. Call it a baby slinger. I'm sure he'll come and beat me up if he heard me say that. Mm. <laughs> Oi! Brussels Airlines A320 John Grinham. Imagine if a commercial jet had to use an inch a resting cable like they do in a carrier team right under. Yeah, tear the flipping back end off of it, wouldn't it? What are you doing? to this. Wow, it literally floats off the runway, man. Clonk. Crazy, man. So efficient. <laughs> it literally goes up vertically, doesn't it? Well, it obviously doesn't because it's got forward momentum, but it's just the, how easily that thing gets in the air. It doesn't roll out on its mains very much. Probably a lot down to the weight, I would imagine. Um, but even so, such an impressive aircraft. And there we go with that uh, bird of prey wing profile that we talked about earlier on. Was floaty J Mank. Rav H, amazing shot, 320 with a parachute and no reverses. Well, right. Looks like uh, Biman Bangladesh uh, 787 ready for departures. Scropy clouds and backdrop getting better and better. Dead Butler aircraft carriers are astonishingly impressive bits of kit. They are. Uh, thank you, Mark Carey. Uh, Ronald Alexander Flores Cantarero. Uh, one month and 24 days for his membership. Thank you, Helen Cowley. Thanks for an amazing show. It's been fab and I love my Sundays watching. Have a great week. Thank you, uh, Helen. Oh, start up. Here's your Aerostar 321. Think of the fuel savings on that jet compared to their old 75. to start up on the Turkish triple by any chance.
up and disrupt the proceedings with a large egg. Long run. Simmons. Denise Brennan will not be flying out of or into LA today. The storm is about to hit. Wow. Love a good storm, me. sea level or <laughs> it's the uh, yeah it isn't uh Scropey, once an aircraft takes off how quickly do the wheels stop rotating? Uh, I take it's before they retract Scropey, yes. There's a system um, the, uh, the braking system will stop the wheels from spinning uh, before they uh, retract into the undercarriage bay. Reason for that is because otherwise you might get an overheating brake. And not only that, but you have um, these, these uh, the wheels are obviously de designed to spin um, in a vertical position and not in a horizontal position. You'd be putting a huge amount of load onto the bearings and the, uh, the center sis, uh, the, the hub assembly of the wheels if you were to allow them to continue uh, rotating whilst then whilst they're in the undercarriage bay wow nice funky shot um, so yeah the other uh, the the brake the the wheels are braked from rotating um, and uh, that's why sometimes you see a gear down um, where you see an aircraft take off with its gear uh, down after it uh, after it. sorry let me start that again it's why sometimes you see an aircraft depart and the gears stay in the extended position because there is a wheel continuing to spin or a warning um, system inside the undercarriage bay which is uh, not working as it should do to or from roost. That's when you're in a centrifugal force shred ahead, yes. Indeed. Um, they're not designed to uh, rotate in a in a well, you know, unless you design specifically a, a specific um, component that is can spin on its axis on a horizontal axis rather than a vertical axis but these wheels are not de designed in that way Is that, is that, how's that audio, folks? I just made a little tiny change. Stand by. How's that audio? 20 seconds. 
second star. Has it gone down, Jilly? Yeah, you need to do it. You need to have a, a really good listen to this. you need to get to as close to zero as you can. Right, that's on zero dB. I want to hear what people have to say in terms of feedback now. Jeffrey Dingle, a bit better, it's been a bit quiet for me. Audio sounds fine to me, Sandy Hummy. Raymond Sudor. Clayton, it's better. Interesting, okay. I'm gonna leave it at that then. It's on zero, mate, it's on zero. It's on zero dB right now. Audio's a tad louder now. Sounds a bit louder, sound better at zero. Crystal clear, audio's good, louder and clearer. Five to five, got louder. Good, 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 okay, folks. Could have done that six hours ago, Jerry. Yeah, but at least we know now, at least we know that zero is good because it was on it was on like nine and uh, before it's been on tens. Stuff like that. Look at this thing winding up. Look. Oh man, that is beautiful. It was a big vape, wasn't it, Alex? Vape-tastic. It's crazy, squeezing that air so tight, man, when it ingests it, turns it into its own climatic condition on the intake of those engines. Moisture. See, as the, uh, as the sun dips, or goes lower, gets lower, the temperature drops, um, so you get to a, a point at which the, um, the air molecules are, um, are squeezed so much that the, um, it turns into a mist. But winter sound is better. Okay, that's good. Shoot for the zeros then. Shoot for the zeros, GP. Fingernails all done up, look. Been down the nail bar. Alison Johnson's a new member. Welcome, Alison. Just joined on premium. Very warm welcome to you, Alison. Undercarriage strut looks lots, lots like a jumbo jet, doesn't it, with that uh, upper, upper strut there. Vortigan. Oh, oh, all of those humps and various looking sensors on the roof of these aircraft. Vortigan. That's a fantastic question. Um, all different um, sensors and um, masts, communications, uh, temperatures, weather, 
um, all that kind of stuff um, as well as your uh, satellite communications blister which is the big one lots of masts underneath the aircraft as well antennae and all kinds of things A, uh, I think it's a, a yes, a unanimous yes from everybody about this uh, new location at the LFB. Thank you to uh, to everybody who supported us on this. It's been a, it's been um, quite a long um, period of, of getting it right and um, meeting up with the right people. And um, John's a big part of that, big player in that whole part. So a big thank you to John. Um, and the original um, yeah the, uh, the original red red watch of course we've got all the different watches that um, we need to reach out to of course a big shout out to uh, the Heathrow police as well uh, we do things right here on Big Jet TV folks we have to do things right uh, and that involves informing the Heathrow security teams London Heathrow we get a CAD number every time we film to make sure that they are aware if there's any questions by anybody like somebody on a roof with a big tripod don't worry sir we got it we know they are um, or madam um, so you know we have to do things right health and safety has to be um, uh, literally uh, very carefully um, laid down in terms of uh, what we have to do uh, risk mitigation uh, through risk assessments of course our uh, public liability um, policies are in place uh, working at heights um, health and safety all those kinds of things have to be uh, it's always worth putting in the putting the work in the, in the background to make sure that we can bring you stuff like this folks that's what it's all about bringing you the Eight locations now in the was it? Oh, it's number seven, is it? Okay. It's in Rotunda, yeah. Oh, Paul at Trapeal has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much. Very kind of you, Paul. Wonderful thing to do. Uh, Kathy Dudley. Uh, sorry, Dudley. Sorry, Kathy Dudley is uh, is a is a uh, is a brand spanking new mem member. Sorry, I uh, said Dudley like that because it's from Dudley. <laughs> um, but um, no, Dudley. Thank you, uh, Kathy. A very warm welcome to you. Brand spanking new member. Getting involved in the, in the chat is a wonderful thing, folks. Uh, please don't feel in any way, you know, pressured to get involved in the chat. You don't have to, um, but uh, it just means that you, as a member on the show, um, can come in, chat to me, uh, chat to members on here, and get involved in the chat if you wish to do so. Uh, Alex Thomas, yes, uh, I agree with you. Uh, that does look good in the light, doesn't it? The SAS livery in sunlight. Roy Clayton, Virgin Dreamliner about to take off his name. Olivia Ray after the baby of a Virgin steward killed in St. Lucia. Yes, indeed. You're absolutely right. Um, and what a wonderful uh, thing for Virgin Atlantic to do. Um, you know.
George Chew. Question, George. Uh, the tyres don't pop when they land um, because, uh, well, first of all, the ply, the thickness of the rubber. The rubber, uh, both the outer wall and the side wall of the uh, of, of these these aviation tyres is very thick a very thick ply as they call it um, and they're pumped up to somewhere around about 200 psi believe it or not which is a uh, substantial amount uh, and um, also filled with nitrogen which uh, has a number of different uh, positive things going for it one of which if it's oxygen or air, um, the um, you know the internals of the uh, of the tire and the wheel where they meet can potentially um, rust due to uh, moisture getting inside. Whereas that doesn't happen with nitrogen. Also. Uh, So we're going to get this 350, folks, um, and then we're going to uh, get on our way. Can I just say, look out on your uh, if you're if you're an, if you're new to Big Jet TV, folks, hit that subscribe button. Um, not that we're desperate in any way for uh, for subscribers or likes or anything like that. It's entirely up to you what you do. Um, but. One thing we don't want you to do is miss out any on any shows that we have. Um, so, if you subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the um, notification button as well, uh, so that you get the bell, the ding a ling a ling when we're live, or you get a notification at least. Um, so a lot max. We're also on Twitter, folks. If you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, we're quite active on there. Uh, you can uh, follow me on my LinkedIn page as well. And um, download the app while you're at it as well, folks. Uh, very, very simple. Available on uh, Android and iOS. Um, free of charge, of course. And um, another, another tool in your pocket for uh, making sure that you don't miss any um, announcements 
for where we're going to be. Uh, this is what you call an intersecting departure coming up for this little 320 Neo. There's an out of alignment nose that I'm talking about, folks. See it? See that ray dome there? That's a replacement ray dome, and they painted it out of alignment. <laughs> Almost looks like it's been smashed in the mouth, doesn't it? Big swollen. <laughs> Even out of his chewing peanuts. Sarah Lancaster, there we go. Sarah Lancaster didn't know there was an app. Indeed there is. Um, download it, folks, because um, then you won't miss any show notifications because wow this is one angry trickle Heck. he's gone through the gate this pilot We'll be going back to Japan, folks. No doubt about it. Um, I've got to say, I love the I love the whole culture out there. I just got to make sure I take my drive, get get the not take my driver license, get the um, do the testy thing, isn't it, Julie? Uh, get the the thing. <laughs> Driving license permitty thing, yes, which is very easily done. Um, and is valid for what, two years was it, Chile? Is it valid for two years or is that global, that's five years global entry, really? the undercarriage tilt folks watch the wheels tilt there you go see see that how cool is that tilt mechanism on the Boeing 767 787 um, very clever uh, because space is at a premium really uh, on these big jets so um, Configuring the um, the wheel housing is a uh, is a is a very in, is an art. He's an artist, but it, there, it is an art. Um, um, Boeing have a tilt mechanism. Uh, Airbus have done it other ways. Uh, Jay Bryson, international driving permit. I, one year from post office. I think I need to get mine done tomorrow. Seven pounds, if I remember, from the post office. Interesting. I heard it was from the RAC. Or the AA. I don't know. Somebody said it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Sandy Humby loving the tiltage. Alan is a new member. Uh, Alan uh, Clark. Good day to you, Alan. A very warm welcome. Say it there, Dad.
Don't worry. Beautiful noise coming up from the street. It's like the clickety clack of a train on a track. It is a beautiful noise. for anywhere um other than uh oh is there oh okay all right well shut up oh okay yeah i've got you i've got you i've got you uh, just uh replacing my chili just for the last few minutes just check yep. Sorry about that. Okay, here's our curtain call, folks. Iberia's 350. Can I just say, folks, thank you very much indeed for your, uh, for your, oh, should we just finish on the trip this <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna finish on the trip this Looks good in the sunlight, didn't she?
Jordan Charlie. No, that's a uh, it's a scheduled flight with the A350. Uh, depends on uh, just capacity. Um, obviously, a very popular destination, and uh, as a result, sometimes you might see their 320 being used. Other times, you might see their 330 uh, and the 350. And so, you're kind of lucky if you're uh, if you're on that short, what's classified really as a short haul flight, and you have to end up on the 350. Uh, it is pretty cool. Oh! There you go. Hey, folks! Thank you so much. It has been wunderbar. Um, oh, hello. Is that a little bit of a? Uh... Oh no, it's just going. <laughs> Oh, there's a bit of road rage going on over there. Uh, yeah, thanks, folks. It's been fantastic. Once again, um, a huge thanks to the LFB. Uh, make sure you check out that, uh, that QR code. It might be a bit long-winded, folks, but it's worth it in the end. If you're sitting there, um, wait, for your, uh, wait for the kettle to boil. Uh, or if you're um, waiting for your... Um, um, food to uh, to cook. <laughs> I, don't know. Oh, I don't know, whatever. But just what's that, GP? Got what? Oh, okay. Um, but listen, folks. Thank you very much indeed. It has been wonderful. Thank you for all you uh, people, wonderful people who's gift who have gifted uh, membership. Thank you to London Heathrow. Of course, we cannot thank you guys enough. Some amazing stats on London Heathrow, folks. There's many people go through this airport as are the uh, population of the UK. Pretty amazing, eh? Um, every year, that is. Um, but anyway... Um, oh, that's the old uh, thing for me. See? You saw it. It got a little glimpse of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but what a great location, folks. We'll be, we'll be coming back here. The beauty of this place is as well, of course, uh, is for zero nine arrivals as well because they'll will get the touchdown and they'll be uh, flat out on their reverses right here as well. Lots of water spray. Hopefully, come on, let's have some rain. Um, but uh, you know, um, we'll be back on Wednesday. We're not going to say where we're going to be just yet, but uh, but make sure you turn on your phones and uh, we will see you on Wednesday. Thank you, Jilly. Thank you, everybody who helps out on the channel. And um, Simon, we're coming to get you. Okay, so we're going to fade and go to titles on this, yeah? Coming up from the street. Dum, 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 dum. Do that home check, folks. It's definitely worth doing. It might just, there might be one thing in there that sort of like makes you think, hmm, you know what? I haven't done that, or I haven't got that. Maybe I should get that to make, um, to just make things better in my life. Thank you, everybody. Look after yourselves. Be good, be safe. Be responsible and look after the animals, will you? See you later. Cheers. Cheerio.